to Wadsworth Hayes, and we are underway. It goes over Kevin Williams' head, out of the back of the end zone, touch the back, and Troy Aikman and the Dallas Cowboys will come on offense for the first time. Aikman, as Pat said, yet to be shot. Three touchdowns, one interception, and wins over the New York Giants on a Monday night, and then last week against Denver back at Texas Stadium. And he will run behind a huge offensive line. And Vern, I think early in the game, this is an important defensive series for the Minnesota Vikings. I mean, Jack Del Rio said to us yesterday, hey, my dream, my vision of this game was to have a three and out. This is an important early defensive series. Watch Esther at two all over the 98. At the nose tackle spot defensively. Here's the handoff. It's hit behind the line. Emmett Smith loses yardage. And McDaniel leads the defensive charge. Just the kind of start you want. Yeah, the Vikings must make this a fourth quarter game. And the way you do that, you stay in it against the Cowboys in the first quarter. Number 58 is Ed McDaniel. He is the backside linebacker. He should make a lot of tackles. Just kind of blew right through Daryl Johnson, made the play, and that's the start the defense won. To give you an idea of how difficult the pass facing Minnesota is, the Cowboys have had the ball 21 times this year. Only once have they been held to three downs and a punt. Aikman to throw. Got him. season. Roy Barker. Yeah, they're, they're still trying to fight for that three and out, believe me. But you spend so much time worrying about John Randall. There's some other guys that can put some pressure on the quarterback as well. Number 92, Roy Barker, has had a big start to the season in the rushing the passer and stopping the run. Three wide receivers. Third and 20. Aikman lobs it to Emmett Smith. Harlan Barnett gets him. Three and out for Minnesota. You know, Vern, that's good defense. The Cowboys coming into this game only had five negative plays in their first two games. And they had two in that series. So Tony Dungy's defense set the tone and the exact tone they wanted to get done early in this game. John Jett is on the punt. There is Tony Dungy. <laughs> Defensive coordinator extraordinaire, at least for the moment. David Palmer to return it. Bad punt. That's a, that's a shank you very much. It gets a cowboy roll, however. It does go out of bounds near the 48-yard line. So for John Jett, Jett, a poor punt, but a little bit of a break at the end of it. 37 yards, including about 15 on the roll. 38-year-old Warren Moon. Two touchdowns, one interception. Going with more high percentage passes this year. They want to cut down on the interceptions, uh, but he said to us yesterday, Vern, that we have to play a perfect game to beat these Cowboys. Which begins and ends with no turnovers. Jake Reed, it's behind him, and Larry Brown arguing for offensive pass interference. It'll go for uh, an incomplete pass. Chris Carter, Jake Reed had 85 catches last year. Robert Smith, with 111 yards last week, surpassed his season total for 1994. And up front, Todd Stusey and Corey Stringer, a second-year tackle and a rookie tackle, are going to be tested heavily tonight. With Haley and Talbert coming at them. Second and ten. Evans stays in the backfield. He's the lead blocker for Robert Smith, who squeezes yardage of the right tackle. Corey Stringer moves the pile, and they cross the 50 to the 47-yard line. Defensively for the Cowboys, familiar names now. Talbert and Haley at the defensive ends. Maryland and Leon Lett at the tackles. Robert Jones, a resuscitated career at the middle linebacker spot. Darren Smith, a holdout. And Godfrey Miles is occupying his spot. And this may be the weak part of the Cowboys' defensive unit. If there is one. Third down. Shotgun. Handoff and 
complete. First down, Minnesota at the Cowboy 41. What a lead block by Randall McDaniel. I mean, you know, the defense did their job. They forced a three and out the punt. They got good field position. And then that first third down, it's kind of a change-up play. It's a passing down. Number 64 is Randall McDaniel. Watch him lead the play here. Ampley is more of a receiver than a runner. McDaniel dominates his guy. Ampley follows that block, and they pick up a first down. So kind of a change-up call on third and five. First and ten, McDaniel back in his spot. Now they're going to reset the game clock, or the play clock, rather. Our referee tonight, by the way, is Ed Hockley. as he crosses the 40 to the 38. Leon Lett got him. And he got stunned. He was stunned. And, and Woodson got him, too. And Robert Smith is hurt. The one thing about Robert Smith, we've said there are not too many running backs like him. He is tall, he is angular, and he is a big target at 6'1". Most of the good running backs you see now, Vern, are that, you know, 5'8", 5'9", 5 5'10", 5 200 pounds. So he goes 6'1", although he looks taller than that. And... You know, he, he presents quite a target. Danny Green went way back in NFL history to compare him to a running back. Lenny Moore, the outstanding running back of the Colts in the 50s. What about this Dallas defense? They have a lot of guys that can make up some ground quick. Oh, boy, and that is Darren Woodson, the strong safety. And that is uh, the helmet in the stomach. Mm. Ouch. That's going to be ribs. And that's going to hurt. Time has been called. Kurt Smith resting himself in his ribs on the sideline. No uh, official medical report that Scotty Graham has taken his place. It's good to see a bit of a smile for Robert Smith. And there's Darren Woodson. Yeah, Darren Woodson has been a force. You know, he's, he's noted now for all the big plays he made a year ago, but he makes a lot of the little plays, like that one. I mean, uh, stuff in the hole when you had a, a big gain on your hands. Scotty Graham is in the backfield now. He's the season to tailback. Robert Smith was a contract holdout in preseason. Here's a fake reverse, and Scotty Graham is filled as he gets down to the 37 yard line. That will bring up a third and about four or five, and it'll bring in the nickel defense of the uh, Dallas Cowboys. Well, it would be a great lift for the Vikings if they could score first. Now, you know, we're still very early in this ball game, but the thing about Dallas, they're the best front-running team, I think, in the NFL. And, and you're playing at home, you'd love to get that first score, but to be able to do so, you have to convert this third down. Cowboys are going to go with four down linemen and seven defensive backs. Greg Trimble has come in. Bill Bates, the 13-year back in the middle. The kind of mistake Warren Moon said they could not have. And, and, and the snap was catchable. It was a little off. It was a little off to his left, but it was catchable. Should have been caught. Very good. Look how he actually started backing up before the ball get, uh, got there and uh, kind of short armed on it. Second in history. Dave Craig uh, leads that uh, distinguished group with 132. My buddy Dan Fouts retired at 106, and he's going to love me bring his <laughs> into that conversation. Nice high punt. And it's going to be down at the one. Whoa, Mike Saxon, the former Cowboy, leads the league and puts down inside the 20. And this one, you catch it, Vern. Whoa. This thing was, was up there. And again, they had a good defensive play and a good special teams play. I mean, so the defense did their job, the special teams have done their job, and now the Cowboy offense for the second time is backed up. Cowboys at their own one and a half. No score, 10 4 to go first quarter. Already two negative plays for Dallas on the opening drive. That's Johnson and Emmett Smith. Behind Troy Aikman, Emmett Smith. Look at him dance. Look at him dart. Look at him get the Cowboys out of jail. Kind of my, reminded me a little bit of a 99-yard run a guy made in a uh, Cowboy uniform a number of years ago. Right down from that same spot, exactly. as a matter of fact. Against his very same team. Tony Darcet. Absolutely. You know, you look at 
at Emmett Smith, and he always seems to know where he wants to go, and he doesn't waste any steps getting there. He doesn't see people, he feels it, and makes a miss. Gain of 14 for Smith. Novacek starts in motion. First and 10 Dallas. They hand it to Smith again. He gets a little bit of a push back from Michael Irvin and is knocked out of bounds by Charles Mitzi, number 21. There is a flag down on the far sideline. Again, the referee tonight is Ed Hockley. And here's Charles Mincy, grabs a little face mask. And the official's right there. That seems to be the uh -huh. junior variety, the adolescent uh, yes. call, <laughs> not the adult. <laughs> Personal foul, face mask by the defense, number 21, 15 yard penalty for oh, 15. Down. Boy, I thought it was a junior variety. Yeah. That was a 13-year-old. That wasn't a 21-year-old. That thing couldn't vote. <laughs> Dallas backs and receivers, Kevin Williams, Michael, Irvin, Novacek, Emmett Smith, and Johnson. And look at the size of this Ouch. offensive line. Yeah. And they have just dominated the first two games. And the Cowboys have moved out of trouble now. They're at their own 35, first and 10. Johnson comes wide right. Aikman will throw. Deep left side. Short and in front of him. Defensively from Minnesota, a unit that held Barry Sanders to 35 yards last week. Barker James Harris, Tuaolo, and John Randall, 12 and a half sacks last year. Thomas Del Rio and Ed McDaniel, the linebackers. And Barry Switzer feels that they can protect Troy Aikman. This secondary is vulnerable. Yeah, he thinks he, they think they can work on uh, on four, and they think they can work on both of those safeties. He was a starter last week. Corey Fuller is a rookie getting his first start in left corner. Smith. At the 36. Eight forty-five to go first quarter. Well, Troy Aikman, I, I think he can beat you with fewer passes than any quarterback in the league. You know, he does, he's not a stat guy. He's not going to throw for 35 touchdowns or a lot of, have a lot of 300-yard games. Not a fantasy football guy. He is not, but he will slice you and he will dice you and he will beat you with a few passes. Kind of a long sort of guy. Yeah, vegematic. Right. Third down. End of the flat for Smith. That's oh, a block oh, from Johnson. Oh, oh dandy block. That is going to be short of the first down. But Moose Johnson leveled Del Rio. Yeah, you know, Daryl Johnson's one of those guys you don't appreciate really until you watch the tapes on Monday. You know, he's the kind of guy that'll make make blocks like this. Good coverage here as Aikman looks downfield first. Then he's going to try to go to Johnson and dumps it off. And that's the kind of confidence he has in Emmett Smith on third and long to try to give him a chance to run for it. But Del Rio got smoked. Actually, it was Robert Griffith. That's my mistake. 24. He's the guy that got popped. Okay. And then Jack was down, and he got up, having been uh, leveled. The thing about Johnston, though, in so many subtle ways, he can help their team win. John Jack, second punt. David Palmer back to return it. This will go over. Oh, he's got it at the 10. He's dangerous. Tiny All-American at Alabama. Had a disappointing year a year ago, but don't forget about him tonight. Earlier in preseason, he had seven punts returned against Kansas City for 201 yards. That'll keep you up at night. <laughs> First team to die. Uh, take you back. A young enemy. <laughs> and he said he's going to score. I thought, well, that'll go in the archives. <laughs> you look right. You look right. Oh, dear. I had a few, little, few more here is that. We all did. <laughs> in the backfield, Robert yeah. Smith he is popped by Charles Haley. And Charles Haley is a guy that just going to blow right by Todd Stucy, number 73. I mean, he tries. It, it's almost a Nolan Ryan no-hitter. I mean, he, he puts he puts the, the hands out there, and Ch Charles Haley gets a little ole, and he makes the stop. We chatted with Robert Smith yesterday, the young man from Ohio State, and talked about running right at Haley. He said, well... He's a, an exceptional pass defender. He's a good run defender. Let's put it that way. He's pretty good on that way. Run back. Learn the run. Whoa! Whoa, man! Cowboys have it. Leon left. Uh, that's twice 
now Warren has lost the ball once in the shotgun formation this just comes right out of his hand without a problem and mind you this Minnesota team is not good enough to win tonight by making mistakes they must play an error free game and this is the first significant error of the evening I mean that's just losing the handle Again, they're, they're not a, uh, the Vikings are an average football team. They're not a dominant team. And to stay in with the Cowboys, you can't turn it over. Unfortunately, that's going to wake it, make its way to the football follies. Yep. For Warren, I say unfortunate. It just slipped. And here are the Cowboys at the Minnesota 20. Well, this is a situation you may want Michael Irvin on a post pattern. I believe it was a post pattern. You know, they were going to... Michael Orvin runs that skinny little post pattern. I mean, he is he is the wide guy, and all they're trying to do is create a matchup with the corner and the safety. He's the wide guy, number 88. Top of the screen. The inside receiver uh, free, uh, ties up the free safety. Michael Orvin makes a, a great adjustment to the ball in the air, and they have the touchdown. Michael Irvin is tied in number of 100-yard receiving days for the Cowboys with 26. Last week, he came six yards short of holding the record by himself. Wants to get it tonight. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wow! My, was that a bad catch? <laughs> that was awful. That looked like the Kansas City-Oakland game this afternoon. <laughs> well, they felt if they could, could protect Troy Aikman, they could work on these corners and safeties. And you get Michael Irvin in the first post pattern of the evening. A terrific adjustment when the ball's in the air. He owns it. Cowboys were perfect in what they call the red zone. That's the area inside the 20. Eight of eight. Well, make it nine of nine. That's perfection of you know, the highest order. They they are just so hard to stop. It's 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 kind of like you know, balancing the federal budget. It's easy to talk about, but real hard to do. It's easier for you to talk about <laughs> than some of us. <laughs> yeah. That, by the way, was uh, Chris Borneo's first career miss at the point after touchdown. The last Cowboy miss was by Lynn Elliott in 1993. Lynn Elliott's the guy who missed the field goal oh, was... in the game this afternoon. Yeah, Here's John Baker kicking off. It's taken by David Palmer, returning kickoff, as well as punch tonight. And they like his chances doing this. And that's a pretty good effort. The Vikings get it out to the 33. Well... The Cowboy coaches were going to run the post to Michael Irvin the first time inside the 25. You think Barry Switzer liked the results? Well, you know, it's a nice thing when you when you feel like you have a game plan and, and things work. And, uh, you know, that obviously did. And, and now the Vikings, you know, they had a defensive game plan. They wanted a three and out. They, they, that happened early in this game. The offense didn't capitalize on good field position. And, and now Warren Moon hasn't, hasn't really gotten the rhythm of this thing. Fumbled the last time. And, and now they're battling, battling that, that Dallas thing that everybody seems to battle. They have have this year. Six nothing Dallas. Moore has two fumbles thus far in the game. One loss. That pass complete right side. Andrew Jordan, the tight end number 89, makes the grab. Yeah, the Vikings have two tight ends. They do two different things. Andrew Jordan is the receiving tight end, and Adrian Cooper, number 87, he's the blocking tight end. Andrew Jordan got kicked out of last week's game. There's Cooper. He uh, hit a guy from behind. That cost him in the pocketbook as well as an ejection. Six nothing at the six minute mark. Oh, that was his head. Jack Del Rio was talking about the frenzy that happens when teams get behind Dallas. Oh, what a pop on Robert Smith. I tell you, these defensive backs are popping Robert Smith. One time it was Darren Woodson, Woodson that time it was Larry Brown. And think about these Cowboys. You, you can't run outside on these guys, I don't believe. They are just too quick on defense. He pops it out outside because of some inside penetration, some very quick penetration. I think it was Shantae Carver, and he forces him outside. But they have so much speed with Haley and those defensive backs, you don't have a chance. Charles Haley favoring... Uh his left leg muscle pull of some sort. Shante Carver is on the field. Let's see if Haley leaves. A 
Del Rio was talking about what happens when you get behind Dallas. He said, all of a sudden you're in awe of what yeah. they're doing, and trying to play catch up against these yeah. guys is just darn near impossible. You know, as we watch Charles Haley, we talked about it on the pregame show. I everybody's made a big thing about signing Deion Sanders, but I think the fact that Charles Haley decided not to retire is as equally a large story as they signing Deion Sanders. They're, they're a dominant defense with Charles Haley. But not without him. You just, I, I thought we were going to go the whole night without mentioning him. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, it was in the context of Charles Haley. Though, I wasn't? understand. So you're forgiven. <laughs> okay. 6-0. Second and 13. Or Woodson rather catches up with him. But a nifty run of 44 yards for Robert Smith. Okay, the umpire gave him a good block, and Randall McDaniel, number 64, gives him a good block. The umpire kind of screens somebody. He makes him miss. Jake Reed, number 86, the wide receiver, picks up a good block. And when your wide receiver's block burn, five-yard runs become 44-yard runs. And that's what Robert Smith had right there. That's good blocking all the way around. Amp Lee will give Robert Smith a rest. Charles Evans is in the backfield on first and 10. A 44-yard run. Here's a three-step setup. Amp Lee, who is out of the backfield, catching passes, grabs that one, and then is tackled by Dixon Edwards, number 58. Lee, who spent two years with the San Francisco 49ers, a career high of 45 receptions last year in this pass-happy offense. They want to reduce the number of passes this year, Pat. They threw, uh, what, nearly 600. Yeah, 40 a game, and, and they, one of the things they said, hey, we want control passes, and we don't want the turnover. We don't want Warren Moon throwing as many interceptions as he did a year ago. Robert Smith back at the deep back in the eye. They go to the right side. Evans misses a block, but Smith turns the corner. A flag is down. Robert Smith knocked out of bounds by Clayton Holmes, who uh, claims he was held. You know, Robert Smith has extraordinary speed. He, he's not fast. He's extraordinarily fast. And we talk about people sometimes taking the wrong angle on him. I mean, he, he's tall. He's angular. He's got that long stride. And I think he fools defenders, and they really take the, the wrong tackling angles. Ah, uh, how fast is he, you ask? Well, he was a member of the Ohio State 4 by 400 meter relay team that had Holden, the fastest right time in the world. 89, 10-yard penalty, repeat second down. In 1993. Yeah, yeah. Holding, wipes out the run. Again, the long, loping stride. And then again, you think you have the angle? I mean, it looks like Woodson thought he had the angle, and then he outran him. I mean, that's what he does. He fools you with his speed. Poor angle there by Darren Woodson. Right. We have a report from the Cowboy bench, Charles Haley, a strained left hamstring. He might not be back. Second down. Amp Lee in the backfield. A four-wide receiver set this time. Here's Moon. Drop play. Lee dances right in trouble down at the 20. And the crowd didn't care for the play selection. Yeah. Or the execution either. Yeah. Well, they have to come out of this thing with at least three points. So well, what, what Warren Moon can't do here is take a sack. Well, and certainly can't throw the intercept. If it's close, throw it away. But remember we also said that this is where you got to have a guy like Chris Carter come up and make a play. Play big. I mean, play your size. Out jump somebody. And this is where you're about to see Chris Carter get a chance. Shante Carter is in it right in for the Cowboys. Chris Carter. In the slot, here's Moon back on third down. Screen pass, oh boy, Leon left. <laughs> He's a force, recovered a fumble, stopped the screen. We were talking to Dave Campbell, the defensive coordinator, and said, when he's on, when he decides to play, you can't block him. He said, we just got to get him to play every down. Because when he plays hard, you just can't stop him. That brings on Fouad Reves to try his 31st consecutive field goal. Last week he hit two, and that set a new NFL record. He broke the mark of held by John Carney. Mike Saxon will hold, Mike Morris will snap it. Everything's good, the kick is on the way. Make it 31 in a row for Fouad Reves. A 42-yard effort. 
It was last week when he set the record, and it was a 32-yard kick. Mike Saxon bobbled the hole. And it was only the, the fact that they'd worked together for so long that uh, allowed Reveas to stay back. Well, Mike Saxon said, actually, it wasn't Mike Morris's best snap. <laughs> well, the offensive line took umbrage at that. Yeah. So earlier this week, they grabbed Mike Saxon, and they taped him, <laughs> taped him up in the weight room. <laughs> Right to the weight room. I mean, actually, to one of the, one of the machines, one of the equipment, man. It was like 18 rolls of tape. It could not uh, extricate himself from the mess. Mike said that wasn't as bad as what happened to former Viking kicker Rich Carlos here a couple of years ago. <laughs> Carlos, his wife, said she didn't want him hanging around with offensive linemen because they dressed funny. They taped him up and strung him over the goalpost and hooked him like a marlin and then took pictures of him. <laughs> Uh, jinks are not done uh, here in the, uh, in the land uh, of the north. That's great. Oh, well. There's, uh, there's another, another example of, of the fans. too much lutefisk. He's wondering why people don't get goosebumps on their face. I saw that guy at the cross country in Lillehammer. <laughs> and in the meantime, more serious conversations with Warren Moon and Chris Carter. Brian Billick, offensive coordinator to the left. Charles Haley, strained hamstring. 6-3 game, Fouad Reves will kick off. Devin Williams after two. Oh, oh, man! Richard Brown, who is here because of his special teams play, he played for Gary Zahner before at San Diego State. Yeah, you know you're a number 52. You know you're a good special teams player when you've been special teams captain of two different teams. Was in San Diego, was in Cleveland. He's about to be here in Minnesota. This guy is a force on special teams. Gary Zahner is a special teams coach of the Vikings, was at San Diego State. He recruited Richard Brown. He recruited Mike Saxon. He's got four former San Diego State players filling special teams roles for the Vikings. 6-3 Dallas. Smith. Fumble! I believe the Vikings have it. Well, Tony Dundee's defense creates turnovers. They've done it since he's been the coordinator here in 1992. And, Vern, we said for Minnesota to win this game, they needed to create two or three turnovers. They just got one. The guy Emmett Smith who does not fumble the ball off. But when you play against the Vikings, you know they're going to be stripping the ball. It was Corey Fuller that stripped it. Number 27, the rookie out of Florida State. And now three or four purple jerseys were there. But Dungy's defense, defense has turned the ball over. And last year they scored seven touchdowns on defense. Emmett Smith, a rare mistake. First fumble in 131 carries. Backs are split. Boom. Drop play. Robert Smith ankle tackle behind the line of scrimmage. It was Charles Haley who is back out there. What a warrior. Unbelievable. You know, but since Tony Dunnage is, is taken over, he has had 113 turnovers since 1992. It's unbelievable. It's no accident player down. Chris Hinton, the right guard, number 78. Uh, that, that's a guy they really need in their run game, Chris Hinton. And Vern, for the, for the Vikings, other than the one fumble by Warren Moon, this game has gone exactly what they wanted to do. You know, the three and out in defense, you know, they played some pretty good offense. They had a good run there with Robert Smith, and their defense turns the ball over, gives them field position. I mean, this so far in this ball game, this has been a, uh, a well-executed one for the Vikings in particular. 78 in right in the middle of the screen. Ouch. Ow, oh, ow, ow, ow. Mm -mm. Ouch. That's Charles Haley yeah. who fell on it. Yeah. I mean, Haley's going to be around the ball a lot, and there's going to be a lot of bodies flying. I mean, it's like trash after the game. You know, just piled up, these bodies in there. Chris Hinton. 13th year from Northwestern. And uh, is assisted to the sidelines. Everett Lindsay, who backs up almost every position on the offensive line, will move into right guard now, number 61. 
second down and nine. 90 seconds to go, opening quarter. Carter in motion to the right side. And quick center, left side, caught. Jake Reed, that's short of the first down at the 17-yard line. Yeah, there's some hit going on by these defensive backs. I mean, Larry Brown twice has tagged some guys. We saw Darren Woodson tag Robert Smith. You know, the, the Vikings felt if there were if there was a weakness on this Dallas defense, they thought they could pick on the corners, but Larry Brown has responded, certainly in the run game uh, and in the tackling game tonight. Uh, Robert Smith comes out. Amp Lee will stay in. It'll be third and one. Double tight end set. Cooper comes to the left side. conceived offensive play. Absolutely. They needed big plays from Chris Carter, not necessarily long plays, Vern. In, in a third and two, when you need to keep the drive alive, this is a big play. He's number 80. He's the man outside. It's kind of a little delay. Ampley goes to the flat. He gets all the uh, attention. Chris Carter just catches a small little uh, pass, a short little pass, and he is a strong guy after the catch. The play is not over when he catches it. Carter comes to the left side. Back to the eye. First and goal from the five. This week. Robert Smith cuts it up the middle over the block of Jeff Christie. This, this is one series where Minnesota would love to punch it in. I mean, and, and we talked about, you know, always chasing Dallas. You get a lead here at home, the crowd gets into it, and, and I think you play 10, 15 percent better. Well, if they're going to punch it in, they're going to punch it in at the south end of the Metrodome. We've reached the end of one. It's 6-3 Cowboys. Pondering that uh, fumble on the left is Smith, who fumbled the right is Michael Irvin. Which one scored the touchdown? Yeah. Michael may be laughing, but that's a very focused and, and disappointed Emmett Smith. You saw that he didn't fumble the ball much, and his team right now is not, you know, uh, performing like they did in their first two games and, and give the Vikings some credit. They've done a pretty good job, special teams and, and on defense. 35 nothing over the Giants in game one, 31-21 last week over Denver at home. Right now it's 6-3, and the Vikings have a second and goal from the four-yard line trailing by that uh, trio of points. Robert Smith, Charles Evans in the backfield. Evans number 29, Lee Walker. He starts in motion. Godfrey Miles, the linebacker, number 98, was the only one out there. And Godfrey Miles uh, had that thing covered all over the place. I mean, remember, Godfrey Miles is really their fourth outside linebacker. Darren Smith, you mentioned they weren't, haven't been able to sign him yet, holding out. But Godfrey Miles was the guy that would played in part of that depth uh, thing that Dallas has had. And, you know, when you thought about Dallas winning those two championships a couple of years ago, I think that would distinguish them was their depth. They're still awfully good, the best right now, but they don't have the depth they had a couple of years ago. Third and goal, 6-3, Dallas. Got to get Chris Carter a chance. Interesting ends of the spectrum. Well, each team has had a turnover, and each team has turned it into a touchdown. First time Dallas has trailed this year. And what you like with Jake Reed is his size. He is 6'3", and he is physical. And he's matched up against Clayton Holmes at 5'10". He gets inside position. The game is over. When you have that size advantage and you get inside position, it's over. You win. You score. First touchdown of the season for Jake Reed. The extra point by Ravez is up and good. Clayton Holmes, who is occupying a spot, filled by Kevin Smith out with an Achilles injury. And this time, the battle is won by the taller guy. the uh, kickoff. The GMC truck leaders, Emmett Smith, and these are up-to-date stats with 300 yards now in two games in the quarter. Natron Means of San Diego, only three back. Barry Sanders at 290. Jerry Allen at 272. 
Robert Smith at 228. So Emmett Smith will be the leader at the end of week three. But right now, that is the farthest yeah. thing from his mind. Well, you know, he had seven carries for eight yards or more a week ago. I mean, the consistency, not only throughout the game, but week in, week out of Emmett Smith is remarkable. Reveille kicks it off. Kevin Williams at the nine. Oh, he's dangerous. Out to the 31-yard line. Richard Brown again and Fernando Smith collaborate on the tackle. And the Cowboy offense will uh, come back on the field. But, you know, th this is a team that you mentioned them being behind for the first time this year. Clearly, they don't panic. These guys have played together for a long time. They're stars. When you think about, you know, uh, Aikman and Emmett Smith and Michael Irvin and Novacek and 2 and A Newton, they've all played at least six years together. And they've got a few years left. Absolutely. They're all signed to at least four more years. First and 10, Dallas. Backs in the eye. Smith and Johnson. Troy Aikman. Play action. Aikman wanted to go deep. He settles instead short. And the catch is made by Corey, uh, Evan Smith, I beg your pardon. The tackle made by Dwayne Washington. I want to amend that. They're all signed except for Emmett Smith. He right. only has one year left. But they're, they're stars, so they're going to be around here for a long time. Emmett Smith can, can, you know, he can hit a home run. You know, his first carry this year was 60, uh, 60 yards, and then he can kind of nickel and dime you. You know, he just kind of stay out here and catch a little pass like this, make a guy miss, and you kind of bleed a slow death. You, you know, he, he can body Maybe punch you, and then he can knock you out. Defense number 87. It's a five-yard penalty and automatic first down. Called 87. That's a tight end, so that's the, the wrong number. But it is against the, the Vikings and moves it out to the 35-yard line. Well, Benny Green finds him in, uh, himself in a division that is going to, again, I think, go down to last week. No clear favorite in the NFC Central. Well, Detroit loses again this afternoon. Green Bay's won a couple now. You know, I was thinking about Emmett Smith's first run of the season, 60 yards against the Giants. They haven't recovered from that no, one run. No. And they're 0 3. And here, Minnesota leads it 10 6, 13 42 to go in the first half of play. Michael Irvin comes near side, number 88. Another check in motion. Smith. Flag is down on the far side. Smith is down at the 40 yard line. Even when you think you've done a pretty good job of defensing Emmett Smith, he picks up five yards. I mean, that wasn't bad defense. Good lead block by Daryl Johnston, too. Offside by the defense, number 92, lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty to keep first down. That's Roy Barker, the uh, left defensive end. Had a sack of Aikman on the first drive. Our coverage of the NFL on TNT continues next Sunday with the Coors Light Pro Football Tonight pregame show at 7 o'clock Eastern. Then at 8 o'clock, we'll watch the Green Bay Packers take on the Jacksonville Jaguars from Jacksonville Municipal Stadium next Sunday right here on TNT. Boy, did Reggie White have another day today. I thought about Man. that. Man. Nate Newton last night did a marvelous <laughs> impression of Reggie yeah. White. He sounds just like him. Aikman pumps, goes deep, man-for-man -man coverage, and it's over the head of Michael Irvin. Good coverage from Corey Fuller, number 27, the rookie from Florida State. You know, that's one thing you don't see much of the Cowboys, throwing the ball down the field deep. I mean, they run those skinny posts and the ends and things, but they don't throw the ball downfield a lot since Alvin Harper left. Now, you're going to see the pressure that Aikman gets. I think it's John Randall who takes a pretty good shot. I mean... Uh, Troy Aikman, as any, any of the top quarterbacks in the league are, he is top first. He's a football player first, a quarterback second. Notice he's got that plastic chin strap on again. Three stitches in his chin again last week. He said he's had stitches every season since he was a senior high school. Emmett Smith to the 41-yard line. And that will bring up a third down. This defense did a great job with Barry Sanders last week, and they're doing a pretty good job so far tonight. He has six carries, 24 yards, and they are getting a lot of purple jerseys around Emmett Smith. 
That man is going to turn 40 this year in October, that man being Tony Dungy. Someday, the doors are going to open. He's going to be a head coach. It's just got to happen. I don't understand why it hasn't already happened. Uh, it's an amazing thing. Corey Fleming in a wide receiver now on third down and five. Short of the first down at the 45-yard line, Dwayne Washington and Robert Griffin, 20 and 24, respectively. A good defensive ball game here. I mean, Darius Switzer, Switzer felt they could throw on the Vikings, but they haven't been able to run particularly well. And just like uh, Barry Sanders didn't really have anywhere to run last week, they played eight men up near the line of scrimmage. I mean, every gap seems to be filled here. And you get two guys sometimes in the gap, and that means you're going to be punting a lot. Uh, John Jett is on the punt for the third time. David Palmer waits for it. This could be returned. No. It bounces in front of Palmer, and it goes out of bounds at the five-yard line. Make it the six. We've got a ball game. 11.37 to go, first half. 10-6, Vikings. And the Dallas Cowboys all this week, up to and including the game tonight, for a special TNT presentation called Six Days to Sunday. It'll be a 90-minute show that will air on TNT on November 8th and on subsequent dates. That's, they do such a wonderful job. I'm looking forward to seeing how it all oh, comes out. Oh, that's only because you were in the thing. Ah. How many times are you going to watch it? Now, now you're making me blush. <laughs> and at 55, I don't yeah. blush uh -huh. well. Everett Lindsay stays in at right guard. Warren Moon has hit his last seven passes. You see how conservative he keeps it here. He goes deep, right side. And good coverage by Brock Marion and Darren Woodson of the Cowboys. Yeah, a lot, a lot of things happen when you're a quarterback in the NFL. You know, we sometimes take for granted a simple completion, but the protection has to be right. You've got bodies flying all over the place. Well, what he did there was just give only one player a chance to catch that ball, and that was Chris Carter. And when you're backed up in the end zone, it's the right play. But they need a first down desperately. You can't afford to give Dallas good field position all night long. They need a first down in this series. Second and ten now from the six. In and out of the hands. Should have been caught. Yeah, should have been caught. Should have been caught. And those are the kind of plays you look back on and, and you'd say, geez, you know, we ended up having to punt out of our own end zone when you maybe could have got the first down. Would have been a tough catch, but that was catchable by Robert Smith. Brings up a third and ten. Minnesota is three of five on third down conversions early in the game. Treacherous play now. Moon, seven to ten. Well, here, here's one of those situations again where those big physical receivers, Jake Reed and Chris Carter, a lot of teams have one physical receiver. These guys have two of them. First down. That one was a rope at the 17-yard line. And a big play for Warren Moon and Chris Carter. Yeah, Chris Carter is not, is not a wide receiver. He's a football player. A lot like Michael Irvin. I mean, you start with those guys, and they're always making the tough one. And that was another big play. Not a long play, Vern, but when you need it on third down, he's the slot receiver, number 80. And Warren Moon is waiting for him to get open. He's holding the ball even though he's in the pocket. He clears the linebacker, and then the ball is zipped inside to him. That's a heck of a play. Carter's second catch of the night, first down and 10. Evans in motion, and Robert Smith is jammed up. Russell, Maryland, was quick off the ball that time, and beat Everett Lindsay got through for the stop. People tend to forget that this guy was the number one draft choice in the NFL in 91. And it was because of plays like this. I mean, he's a gap kind of player. I like John Randall. I mean, if you don't get your hands on him early in the play, he's going to disrupt the play. And he did right there. And he's breathing better because he's got one of those nose things. <laughs> as 
disruptive as a hyperactive child. I mean, he is always going to come off the corner, and then sometimes he's going to fake it and come inside. And, and the Vikings said, hey, we had to have four different ways to try to block him tonight. Well, they haven't done a particularly good job of blocking Charles Haley. Number 94 is going to come in from the right. This time it's an inside move. Goes right by Jeff Christie, the center. And McDaniel, I mean, you're so worried about him beating you to the outside. You forget every once in a while he's going to stop and come inside on you. That's the first sack of the night for Warren Moon and the Vikings. They look at a third and 22, and this ball is whistled down. You have to be real careful in this situation for two reasons. One, you can't... game by the offense. After this is two goal, it remains third down. Okay, one, clearly you can't throw the, throw the interception. But two, your offensive lineman can't have a penalty in the end zone. It's a safety. So, you know, one thing Warren's saying, hey, if you're going to hold, don't do it in the end zone. Make sure it's on the two-yard line. I don't mind you holding and protect me. Just don't do it in the end zone. Right. <laughs> 25. John Jarrett goes on the field down to the 46. Here's Moon. Deep left side behind Jake Reed. And the Vikings will have to punt from their own end zone. And Joe Avazano's special teams can block punts and kicks. They have had 13 block punts and kicks over the last five years. And they always put pressure on the punter. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if they come after Mike Saxon right now. Mike Saxon, the former Cowboy, as well as a former Patriot. Make sure he doesn't have his heel on the back line. They do not come. They've got the return on. Saxon nice and high. Kevin Williams. 50. All in all, not bad downfield coverage. Orlando Thomas, number 43, made the tackle. Remember the story we told you about Mike Saxon getting taped this week? Orlando Thomas got taped yesterday. The rookie was late to practice with the donuts. He'll learn. Yeah. Inspired by the seven deadly sins. Gluttony, greed. I hate this city. You can expect five more. They know his motive. His murders are his sermons to us. They know his game. I've gone and done it again. Seven deadly sins. Seven ways to die. Have you ever seen anything like this? No. Seven rated R starts Friday. 20 to go first half of play. Vikings lead at 10-6. Remember we told you how difficult it was to contain Dallas. They had had only one three-and-out series in their first 21 drives in uh, games one and two. Well, tonight, take a look at this. They've had three punts and two three-and-out drives. That's just good defense by the Vikings. I mean, they have, they have really kind of taken away the run of Emma Smith, and that's where the Cowboys start. Eight men under his center. Ray Donaldson will throw on first down right flat. Corey Fleming, number 27, Michael Irvin. Think about, about the Cowboys, though, Vern. You know, you, you let them hang around, and, and sooner or later, they are going to, you know, they're going to come up with some big plays. And, and Michael Irvin has a tremendous cushion there. That's a little bit easy. That's too easy. I mean, that, that's on the uh, rookie Corey Fuller. And there's Jay Novacek, and uh, he has not been a factor yet tonight, but I, I still maintain he has got to jam him at the line of scrimmage, otherwise he's going to change. First and 10 from the 27-yard line. Play action again. Aitken settles for the short man, Emmett Smith, and he moves it down near the 22-yard line. That's a pickup of uh, maybe six. It'll be second down and four. The Cowboys, by the way, making this trip up from Dallas yesterday, did not get off to a great start. Their charter flight was delayed two and a half hours, a mechanical. They actually sat in the plane for that time and then had to change planes. They got here uh, about 6.30 last night. The luggage did arrive with them, <laughs> which is good news. Yeah, you, you need it in this game. You need the luggage to arrive. Second and five at the eight-minute mark. Jack Del Rio, who played for a number of years in Dallas. 
came to Minnesota as a plan B selection. Yeah, you know, this is a guy you could depend upon, Jack Derrida. Just started his 100th game. Actually, he's never missed a practice the last four years for um, the Vikings. I mean, a guy you know he's going to show up. He's been very effective in the passing game. You see his tackles there. And over the last two years, nobody's intercepted. No linebacker has intercepted more passes than he. He's intercepted seven. It was knocked away by Corey Fuller, the rookie. That was just a good defensive play. Yeah, that, that, we've seen a lot of them. We have seen a lot of good defensive plays, really by both teams. But Corey Fuller, the rookie, and we talked to him this week, he said, you know, I I'm nervous, but I'm not intimidated. I mean, I I'm looking forward to the challenge. I, I have a chance to distinguish myself, and he did right there. Okay, trivia question for the night. Okay. What do Corey Fuller and Deion Sanders have in common? University. Yeah, Florida State. Uh, they got the cellular phone, so. <laughs> yeah. Bonio. That thing looks like a Hoyt Wilhelm pitch. <laughs> <laughs> it knuckled in there, though. And the Cowboys get on the board following the 39-yard field goal. 10-9. Vikings get the ball back when we return. It's cookout time, and who's got lower prices that really cook? Well, your low price leader, Win Dixie, of course. Recently, we checked the competitors' prices. We purchased a variety of cookout items and compared price for price at Win Dixie and Albertsons. And look at this cookout fans. Win Dixie was 18% lower than Albertsons. That's right, 18% lower. So who really puts the sizzle in savings? Win Dixie, home of a lower total food bill and more. Monday night, gun-running, wrestling, mercenary, treasure hunter, and a mighty morbid powerboat kind of show. Experience Thunder in Paradise, Mondays at 8 on TNT. Followed by the explosive action of WCW Monday Nitro, live on TNT. 7-12 remaining first half, Minnesota leading by a 10-9 count. And uh, the Vikings getting ready to return the uh, kickoff. Warren Moon a streak of seven in a row at one point but his fumble recovered by the cowboys led to a 19-yard touchdown the missed extra point has uh, proven the difference in the game right now here's john baker to kick off this one will be returned and david palmer coming up to the eight-yard line and palmer is popped as he gets out across the 20 to the 23-yard line let's go learn Reggie Barnes, number 56, with a tackle, and here come the Vikings. Well, you know, their defense has played well. Their special teams have played well. The offense really hasn't done, you know, a lot tonight. The one thing they have done has been able to get Robert Smith involved in the game. He's got 49 yards already on nine carries in one long run of 44 yards. Yeah, I think that's a significant yeah. part. Actually, he's got eight carries for five yards if you take away the 44 yarder. out to the 40 yard line you know we were talked about it Vern, a little bit is you know everybody seems to have one of these big guys what makes them the vikings a little bit different I, I think they have two of these big guys and you know the play just starts when they catch the ball because they're strong and they can break tackles they can break tackles like a good running back or make guys miss and you know jake reed was a big difference for them a year ago 85 catches the year before he only found 11. So he had a breakout year 
first down at the 40 yard line. Robert Smith, oh dear. Robert Jones. A lot of Robert in that play. Yes. <laughs> Smith and Jones. Yeah. There's a guy you have to admire, though, Robert Jones. And uh, he played this play perfectly. He is number 55, the middle linebacker right here. But he fought through some things, and he fought through some traffic right here. Goes through McDaniel. He just smothers Robert Smith. You know, he was drafted to be the starting middle linebacker, then got in, and they won a championship. Next year he gets demoted. But you have to mind, he didn't quit. He kept fighting, kept practicing. He's back uh, starting again. He's had a very good start to the season. has called by the Vikings. I think the play clock may have been winding down, and Warren Moon said, uh, let's stop the clock and talk it over. So they uh, have two remaining, second down and 11, and a 10-9 Minnesota lead. Vikings trying to go 2-1 and one and hand the Cowboys their first defeat. Next week, our circus moves on to Jacksonville, Florida. Recognize this guy. The Jaguars will meet Reggie White next week as the Green Bay Packers travel down to take on the Jacksonville Jaguars, and we'll be there next Sunday, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, the NFL on TNT. And they may be facing a former Packer at quarterback, Mark Brunel, who Philadelphia really won as their quarterback. We ended up in Jacksonville, and uh, I think Mark Brunel is going to be a heck of a player one of these days. We'll be there. In the meantime, we've got two and uh, two quarters and about five minutes to go here. Amp Lee is on, as are Jake Reed, Chris Carter, Andrew Jordan, and Kadri Ismail. It was Ismail who caught an 85-yarder for the decisive touchdown and went over to the street. A deflected pass. Four-man rush. Moon rolls out. Finds his tight end. And they move the ball out to the 48-yard line. Does Adrian Cooper and Dixon Edwards makes the tackle. Nice play. Actually, Andrew Jordan there, the other Jordan. tight end. Yeah, he's that receiving tight end, and, and Cooper's that blocking tight end. I knew that. Yeah, I knew you knew that. But I'll tell you, that, that's a nice little play-action fake that gets you in uh, in that third short. I mean, they have mixed it up a little bit, uh, the Vikings have, where they've tried to throw in the ball to, to uh, the big wide receivers, and that off a little boot action to get away from uh, Charles Haley. a big little play again right i mean and a patient throw by warren Moon. he wanted to throw this ball out into the left flat he wanted to throw this to robert smith in the left flat and he was taken away but he didn't rush it even though though he knew there was a blitz courageous in the pocket he finds number 80 chris carter and even though it's only a you know a three or four yard game that's still a big little play or a little big play many people about Robert Smith that he breaks tackles he's much stronger than you think and what he says that I wouldn't I wouldn't release Terry Allen until I found out that he was strong enough and tough enough and he is now let's take a look at the Lee Sports scoreboard get you up to date on what happened today Arizona comes from behind and wins that one. Second down and six. 10-9 is our score. Carter in motion. Splits again. Dandy. Warren Moon saw the blitz. Had a slant pattern. Jake Reed says we're going that way. A perfect throw and a physical catch. I Brian Billick, the offensive coordinator, was saying to us this week, we need to have Jake Reed really step up and make, may have a, have a game. Well, he's done that in the first half when they needed him. It's those short slant passes, and you've got some physical plays, and that's Jake Reed's fourth catch of the night. Brian Billick, the offensive coordinator, first down and 10 at the 30-yard line. They hand it inside to Charles Evans, third-year running back from Clark Atlanta College. 
the other thing that Minnesota do, is doing is controlling the time of possession, which is a key thing against this Dallas team. I mean, Dallas has so many weapons on offense, and they beat you a lot of different ways, but they're really controlling the ball, and they've been able to score as well. Cowboys looked unbeatable in games one and two this year. Remember last year, game three, Monday night, they lost to Detroit. right in his face and he finds Jordan the tight end to the 30 yard line but Tony Tolbert was introducing himself to Warren Moon and Tony Tolbert was talking to us yesterday saying hey the, the one thing about Warren Moon you can't let him get started because if he gets started well he is very tough to stop second time they've run this boot in a, in a row and with an aggressive defense a, a defense that that hits a lot of gaps there's a lot of movement not an effective play the boot play, boot, boot play. they've done it twice successfully number 28. Dave, it tells you something, though, Vern, about how the Cowboys feel about Darren Woodson, a strong safety when they line him up on Chris Carter one-on-one, -on -one, and then he does a job like that. Darren Woodson is a heck of a fighter. In the slot is Chris Carter, number 80. Woodson gets his hands on him within the five-yard zone and then knocks the ball away. That's that's good defense by Woodson. And that's going to bring on Juan Reves to drive would be his 32nd in a row. He's had one of 48 in this streak. He also had one of 51 yards. He's made his last 31. Juan Reves, Mike Morris will snap it. Mike Sachs will hold it. And the streak is over. Carlos, who is a kicker at Tennessee, is here, and I'm sure he'll commiserate with his brother Quad when this game is over. The streak ends at 31. Matt Stover of the Cleveland Browns is now the current holder. He's hit 23 in a row. We stood side by side with Mike Boren when he laid 90,000 feet of sod. We carried the team's equipment when Mike Jr. pitched his first game. Then we chauffeured the whole family off to Angelo's to celebrate. GMC Sierra, with standard four-wheel ABS and the same steel ladder frame built into our commercial trucks, it's a truck built for the way you live. Sierra is built for life. See the full line of GMC trucks at your GMC truck dealer. and sizes and then design jeans that give them a great looking fit you'll find it's like we knew your size exactly somehow riders jeans cut to make real people look real good quad Reves is still uh, pacing on the sidelines making no doubt about that missed 48 yarder that saw the uh, streak come to an end with 31 consecutive field goals had his son Nicholas with him at practice yeah. yesterday morning. He introduced us to Nick as his, his summer holder. Yeah. And Nick knew how to do it. Get the laces away. He <laughs> said. Right. Toward the goal post. First and ten, Dallas. They trail by one. Aikman gets back, goes deep left side. That's a bounce pass, and it's incomplete in the hands of Michael Urban. It's amazing. This first half, Dallas only has 70 total yards, 27 rushing yards. Now, mind you, they came into this game, you know, averaging 197 yards rushing. They've dominated people, but the Viking defense has kind of kept them on their heels. 
Coming up for the Fruit of the Loom halftime report, Vince Gellini, the no-huddle highlights, a fast-paced look at the big plays of the day. Ernie Johnson will have a special guest. That's a minute 56 away from now, second and 10. Stunts by the Viking defense. Aikman goes right side, Michael Irvin at the 41 of Minnesota. Yeah, that ball was thrown with some velocity. The pass before was not. That thing was thrown on time with velocity, and there's no reaction time when you throw it that hard to Michael Irvin. 21-yard gain, first down. Cowboys do have all three timeouts left. Bobbled the ball. And Aikman fell on it. And he, he was wondering whether somebody swiped the ball, maybe. He calls a timeout. Cowboys use one of theirs, and they have two left. ball came up he started the, the snap was started and it looked like it stopped it looked like a double double clutch on the uh, on the snap but in any event you know you could look at it one of two ways you know the, the, the cowboy offense is out of sync or the or the viking defense is playing awfully well ray donaldson is the new center of course mark Snep stepnoski took free agency and departed dallas donaldson 16 years with the colts seattle and, you know, you think about this offensive line and, and uh, you know, Hudson Howe, the offensive line coach, maybe the assistant coach of the year thus far in the NFL because, you know, they've had to replace Stepnowski, as you, as you said, Larry Allen's a new guy at right guard, Eric Williams, they've had to rehabilitate them, and yet the beat goes on. I mean, these guys, uh, they put some new guys in there, they give the ball to Emmett, and generally think good things happen. From the 43, second down at 12, 10-9, Minnesota Legion. Well, appropriately in Minnesota, you get yeah, a moose absolutely. call. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, where else would you get a moose call but up here? Well, this is your old stomping ground, you old Swede Norwegian, you. Yump and <laughs> Oh, yeah? Can you name three words that begin with F-J other than fjord? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> huh? Get back to me. I've you? got to think about that one. <laughs> I wondered where you were last night. You're in the library again, huh? Time has been called. Dwayne Washington is the injured Viking, and time has been called by Minnesota. So they have one left. Coming up after the game tonight, TNT presents a tribute to a quarterback who led the 49ers to four Super Bowl victories. Watch a special encore presentation of Joe Montana, the fire inside, tonight on TNT. That's following the Steel post-game report. Well, thinking of Super Bowl quarterbacks, Troy Aikman has two of them under his belt. I think at the, by the age of 27, I believe he has, has won two Super Bowls. And this is a team that is very focused. Uh, we talked to him and... Uh, they're concerned about all the distractions, but they feel like they can do it again. Number 20 is Dwayne Washington, the injured player. He took a shot right in the neck. He's uh, back up on his feet now. By the way, we've not uh, had any res official uh, report on Chris Hinton, the offensive guard who was taken to the locker room earlier in this half. We'll get that uh, shortly, I would assume. And Washington's going to stay in the game, so it'll be third and two. Yeah, Aikman, Aikman has solidly established. I, I, I think back to what Bill Parcells told us in preseason when he talked about quarterbacks in the league and the great ones, and he said, I know Troy Aikman's got it, whatever the, the it is. The total package. The total package. He yeah. said, I think Marino's got it. I know Aikman's got it. Pretty good tribute. He's back. Boy, you don't see oh. that very often. Oh. Whoa, man. A very uncharacteristic performance, an offensive performance by the Cowboys tonight. I mean, a fumble by Smith, a drop by James Novacek. You get the matchup you wanted on a linebacker, Thomas. Perfectly thrown ball. And they're going to go for it. Now, fourth and two, ordinarily, is a passing down. But when you have a guy like Emmett Smith, I think you can do either. I think you can take a chance and give him the ball, and certainly you can throw it. Thus far this year, the Cowboys two of two on fourth down. Fourth and two. Smith behind his right tackle. Aikman will throw. 
Got it. Irvin, that'll be a first down at the 31. Michael Irvin over the middle of the field again. If you don't defend the middle against the Cowboys, you're in trouble. Because that's where most of their key plays come. In the running game and in the passing game. Aikman, Kevin Williams, incomplete. Good defensive job. As we see Kevin Williams burn, I think for the Cowboys, they, they have to find a replacement for Alvin Harbour. They're hoping Kevin Williams can be the guy. The Vikings found the replacement for Anthony Carter and Jake Reed. The Cowboys need to find that replacement for Alvin Harbour. They hope Kevin Williams can be the guy, but they're not going to have the dynamic long pass that they had a year ago with Alvin Harbour. Kevin Williams had this one in his hands. Good defensive job by Broderick Thomas. It's second down and 10. Stunts and a blitz. And good protection for Oakland. At the 15-yard line, first down, Michael Irvin. Michael Irvin's a great loose ball receiver. I mean, the ball's in the air. He, he, he considers it his. Now, Jay Novacek, number 84, kind of sets up the deep throw. He kind of occupies kind of people in the middle. And you know, that's a nice play. He kind of short-armed him intentionally because he knew Michael Irvin was behind him. I mean, the short arm wasn't fear. The short arm was because he felt Irvin behind him. Yeah, no alligator arms there. <laughs> I, I knew, I knew it was coming. Yeah. <laughs> well, those are the intentional alligator arms there. Uh, the trouble is he has that same posture when the check comes. <laughs> Well, you know, now you, you find yourself in a situation, you know, you played well all first half. I'm talking about Minnesota. And, and you, you think you're going to go into the halftime with a lead, and then a methodical cowboy team. Sometimes they can you know, beat you with big plays, and then they can just kind of wear you down with that offensive line. And, and this has been a methodical drive. Still have one timeout remaining. They've got a first and 10 at the 14-yard line, and they trail by the eye. Play action. Aiken puts it up to Johnson. He drops it. Yes. Wow. Very strange evening for the Cowboys. In the land of the moose. Yeah. That one didn't fit. Well, Jay Novacek drops the ball. We don't see that often. Daryl Johnson drops the ball. You don't see that much. Troy Aikman hasn't really been on. He's thrown a couple of balls into the dirt. The last couple of throws to Michael Irvin, though, he actually really drilled the ball well. But this I'm telling is you, blame it on the mechanical of the ball. No, I think you're right. Yeah, it was the airplane. Emmett Smith only 27 yards in the first half. The Cowboys have been perfect so far this season inside the 20. Why not get Michael Irvin another shot? Post pattern. We got him doubled. There's another check. He's down at the seven. 25 seconds remaining in the first half. That is short of the first down. It'll be third. And they got one timeout remaining. You know, this is a play you have to be careful on. You, you think it first down, he's going to use it. He's going to burn it. Smart play. That's the clock, yes. Yeah, generally when the when the clock gets under 20 seconds, you use your timeout, even if you only have one left. This is too important of a play. Third and two, you have to have the right play. You can't rush yourself. Sometimes you got to win ugly, and thus far, this first half, it has been ugly for the Cowboys. Are you thinking at this point anything at all about the first down, or you think it's cut down? No, I think you think you're still thinking about the first down. Are you? Okay. Oh, yeah. At 15 seconds, you can get it up, and you can still die it. Now, you can, again, I still think, with a guy like like Emmett, there's Ernie Zampezi, the offensive coordinator. I mean, there's, there's a chance you could still slip him the ball inside. Yeah, the matching of wits between Ernie Zampezi and Tony Dungy. Well, they both had their moments this evening. The Cowboys have used their last timeout. And they face a third down and two now, trailing by one. Ten to nine. Okay, the, the Vikings better jam Jay Novacek at the line of scrimmage. Don't let him have a clean re release. Johnson starts in motion. Four-man rush. Aikman. Scrambles, shovels it. They got him short of the first down. It's fourth down, and the clock is running. They can't stop it. Got to get up and diet. They throw can't it down. stop it. Throw it. Throw it. Nope. That's good defense. Wow. Good defense and poor clock management. Hey, Vern. Better 
is an excellent half of defense by the Minnesota Vikings. Really is. To a degree, Barry Switzer's offensive team shot itself in its collective foot, but the Viking defense should get a lot of credit. There's Emmett Smith, and there's Broderick Thomas, and a huge play by Thomas, the linebacker. The clock runs out on the Cowboys. First time this season, they have been stopped inside the red zone. We're at the halftime. It's 10-9, Minnesota. The Knights on TN2. The game is just a little more intense. The hit a little harder. The plays a little more drastic. And only winners know the score. No, really. When you're watching Sunday Night NFL on TNT, and we call you with a two-minute warning, and you know the score, you're going to next week's game in the NFL on TNT Two Minutes to Win Sweepstakes. Winners receive choice seats, stay in a courtyard by Marriott Hotel Room, and drive in style in an Avis Rena car. A new chance to win each week. Plus, know the score in our last game, and you're going to Super Bowl 30 in Phoenix. Pick up an entry form at any courtyard by Marriott Hotel or Avis location, or send a postcard with your name address, age, and phone number to NFL on TNT, two minutes to win. P.O. Box 460683, St. Louis, Missouri, 63146. Now the rules. When you know the score, you win the Sunday night NFL on TNT. Sunday afternoon. The NFL player lives for it, hungers for it. He's a guided missile aimed at Sunday afternoon. He's primed in time to go off like a 10-ton warhead when the ref's whistle blows. So what do you think happens when he can't hit anyone? Till Sunday night. Sunday night NFL on TNT. Prime time intensity. The Fruit of the Loom Pro Football Tonight Halftime Report is brought to you by Fruit of the Loom, always in season. 10 to 9 is your halftime score from the Metrodome in Minneapolis, the Vikings over the Dallas Cowboys. And uh, welcome back to our TNT studios in Atlanta, the Fruit of the Loom Halftime Report. I'm Vince Cellini, and time enough for our no-huddle highlights. I can't do this alone. I need my partner, Mark May. We're running out of the no huddle. We don't have a lot of time. Let's get right to it. The no huddle highlights. Highlights from across the league. And we start in San Francisco. New England at the Niners. Yeah, Dion who? They didn't need him today. A lot of offense. Steve Young to Jerry Rice. For two touchdowns, the Niners. Niners just walloping the Patriots 28 to 3. The final at three count. Washington Redskins at Denver's Mile High Stadium. Last second heroics once again for Bronco quarterback John Elway. On the final play of the game, he finds Rod Smith with a 43-yard touchdown pass into the end zone for the win. Excited John Elway and his teammates. They beat the Washington Redskins 38 to 31. He comes from behind to win games sometimes. Cincinnati at Seattle. Seahawks coach Dennis Erickson looking for his first NFL win. Rick Meyer helped him out. Meyer with his best game easily of the year, rolling out. And Rob Thomas is behind everyone in the end zone. That's a 50-yard touchdown pass. Pelfrey missed a late field goal that would have tied it 24-21. It's the Seahawks. The Bears at the Buccaneers. A tough day in Tampa is evidenced by rookie Rashawn Salam's helmet. Up by 13 points in the third quarter, the Bears, Anthony Marshall blocks Reggie Roby's punt and returns it for the touchdown. A tough day for the Buccaneers. The Bears sink the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 25 to 6. The Jags and the Jets, somebody had to win a ball game. Rich Kotite hoping it was his team. And it was. He got a big day from Boomer to Science and Boomer to the air. Three times for touchdowns. This one to the rookie tight end, Kyle Brady out of Penn State. 27-10, Jets. San Diego at the vet in Philadelphia. Ray Rhodes keeping a close eye on Randall Cunningham. This pass goes to Calvin Williams, who is drilled by Willie Clark and fumbles. But Junior Seau's Johnny on the spot picks the ball up and returns it. 25 yards for his first NFL touchdown. The San Diego Chargers hang on. They beat the Philadelphia Eagles 27 to 21. Junior on the spot. Junior on the spot. Oakland at Kansas City. The rivalry renewed. Arizona at Detroit. Late in the fourth quarter, Buddy Ryan looking for a miracle for his first one of the season. Is he going to get one? Yes, he does. On fourth and ten, Dave Craig steps up in the pocket, finds Anthony Edwards in the end zone. 24-yard touchdown, and once again, Detroit snatches victory out of the jaws of defeat. 20-17, to 17, Arizona to Detroit. All right, Atlanta at New Orleans, and Saints fans, yeah, they love Morton Anderson, but now he's an Atlanta Falcon. In the game, in overtime, Jeff George to Eric Metcalf on a short-yarded situation, and that's down to the three-yard line. 
And it was just money after that. Morton Anderson, the late field goal. This time as a Falcon, he said afterward, there's got to be a movie made about this. St. Louis and Carolina, Panther quarterback trying to figure out how to beat the tough Ram defense, but they can't. Roman Pfeiffer nails Willie Green in from behind to force the fumble. Anthony Parker picks it up. The loose ball runs it in for the touchdown. No Rams, no more. These Rams are 3-0 and and headed to Tempe, Arizona. The Rams over Carolina, 31-10. <laughs> Indianapolis at Buffalo. Craig Erickson, sit. It was Jim Harbaugh today, but you know what? The Bills got a break near the goal line in this one. Thurman Thomas fumbling. Quentin Coriak should have had it there. He didn't. Carwell Garner pounced on it for a touchdown. That was a gift. Buffalo needed it, 20 to 14, beating the Colts. Cleveland goes to that wonderful AstroTurf down in Houston at the Astrodome. Oilers backup quarterback Wolf York calling for help, but no one answers. After four interceptions, he watches quarterback Vinny Testaverde find Michael Thriller Jackson for the 35-yard touchdown pass. Cleveland edges Houston 14 to 7. And finally, this: the winless Giants at Green Bay in the Packer Hall of Fame. Perhaps someday Brett Favre will take his place among the Packer greats. Here's Favre to Robert Brooks. Nice catch in the end zone for the touchdown. And on defense, the number one in the NFL coming in. And look at Reggie White draw a bead on Dave Brown and drop him. The Giants were held with just two field goals. They're 0-3. The Pack winning 14-6. Our score at halftime in the Metrodome. The Vikings 10-9 over the Cowboys. We'll be right back with a special surprise guest in a moment. How do you know if something is fruit? Well, is it wholesome? Is it natural? What about variety? Is it homegrown? Is it sweet? Is it fresh? Did you wash it? <laughs> then it's fruit. Fruit of the loom, always in season. You know, I never really learned my school fight song. Oh, I know it. Hell, alma mater. For Eagle Philly, so true. Give me some music. They lit up scoreboards from Ann Arbor to Tuscaloosa. They were warriors of Saturday afternoon. Ali, son of no turf. Oh, the victory strike up the band. Now relive it all with Burger King Legends of College football cups. Free when you upsize your Whopper value meal for just 39 cents. Obviously. <laughs> a wiser choice than a fight song album. They're all true. Basketball is back on TNT. Join us October 20th, 8 p.m. Eastern for the first ever World Club Championship of Basketball. The NBA champion Houston Rockets will take on the Australian League champions, followed by another semifinal contest. Welcome back to the Fruit of the Loom Halftime Report. The Vikings at home and leading the Cowboys 10-9 at the half, but we're going to stay with the basketball theme as we toss back out to Ernie Johnson at the Met. Ernie? <laughs> Yeah, Vince, we've been talking uh, during the first half about the special guest, and I uh, have the pleasure of introducing him, and we've even got a marching band here. The thing is that big. Here, I'll give you a few hints on who this guy might be. 14 NBA seasons, seven of those with the Boston Celtics, won himself a couple of championship rings. From that point, he moved on to Sacramento for a couple of seasons, to Portland for a couple of years. Are you getting the picture, folks, who this might be? Last three years of his career with the Phoenix Suns. And he joins us right now from Phoenix, Danny Ainge, the newest member of the Turner Sports family. It is our pleasure to welcome you as an NBA analyst on TNT and TBS, Danny. And I'm, I'm assuming this means in the end of a basketball career. Yeah, it does, Ernie. And uh, I'm real excited about this opportunity and uh, this new challenge that I have in my life. Danny, let's talk about the NBA a little bit and about what the league has gone through over the past couple of months. It looks like things are scheduled to go. Has there been any, will there be any residual effect of the, for instance, the Jordan faction, the Ewing faction? What do you think? I really don't think so. I think things are going to go on as normal. Uh, I think you're going to see a lot of transactions over the next month, and the fans are going to get excited about the upcoming season, and I think it'll all be behind us once training camp gets underway. Give me some insight into Charles Barkley's mindset these days. Is he going to play another year in Phoenix? <laughs> I hope Charles plays, Ernie. Uh, you know, I've been looking forward to this chance to do TV just so I can get at Charles, along with all the other NBA officials. But uh, I think Charles will play. He's indicated to me that he's anxious to get started again, and uh, I haven't played with a more fun player ever, and I think it'd be a tragedy if he were to end his career right now. Danny, thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining our family, too, and, and good luck to Michelle. I know you guys are expecting your sixth child. That's why you can't be here tonight, but again, thank you very much for joining us, and we look forward to working with you. Danny thanks, Ainge, the thanks. newest member of the Turner Sports family. The second half is coming right up from the Metrodome. 
The Fruit of the Loom Pro Football Tonight Halftime Report has been brought to you by Fruit of the Loom, always in season. What does it take to win two Super Bowls in a row? I'll show you. That's me, Emma Smith of the Dallas Cowboys, MVP of Super Bowl 28 in the NFL. It's always a team effort that wins in the NFL, and it takes a team effort to be a winner in your community, whether it's here in Dallas or in your hometown. That winning team is the United Way. Right here in Dallas, we're helping people who really need our help. Through more than 100 agencies and programs, assuring your contribution is being spent wisely. These are the real MVPs, the most valuable people here in Dallas. How you doing? The list of people who need our help is long. But through the United Way agencies and programs, we can create an offense and a defensive line that can reach people who really need our help. Through the Salvation Army and so many more. United Way, reaching those who need help, touching us all. This message furnished by the National Football League. The NFL on TNT is brought to you by Isuzu, makers of incredible four-wheel drives, by Riders Jeans and Casual Clothes, and by Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. Halftime at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. The Minnesota Vikings leading by the measure of a mixed extra point. Chris Bonyol, the first uh, miss of his career. It's 10-9 right now. And a really interesting defensive struggle thus far, Pat. Yeah, I think the fact that the Cowboys only have 27 yards rushing is a very telling statistic. I mean, they've been dominating the first two games running the football, but the Minnesota defense has really taken that away. There are going to be some conversations, I would think, about clock management, uh, the Cowboys at the end of the first half. Yeah, they did not manage the clock well at all, and, and they, it was a big play by Broderick Thomas that really forced the, the expiration of time. Now, it was a clever little pitch play by, by Aikman, but that was really his third or fourth torch. He was trying to get the ball downfield into the end zone. That was taken away by good defense, and they t pitched the ball to Emmett. He didn't pick up the first. Well, time now for the Riders game summary. Third down conversions, check that one out. Dallas hasn't made one yet. Time of possession, almost uh, six and a half minutes in favor of Minnesota. Emmett Swift with uh, 27 yards. Robert Smith, 44 of his 53, came on one play. The Cowboys will kick off, and David Palmer has it at the 10. Heads to his right, comes back up, and is dragged down as he gets to the 20-yard line. You know, when you play the, play the Cowboys, it, it's a measuring stick, you know? It's a measuring stick. In the first half, the Vikings have measured well. How about old Billy Bates, number 40, in his 13th year? I mean, he still has it. Still loves special teams. Bounces off a couple bodies. There you go. <laughs> I talked to yeah. Bill before the game. He and his wife, Denise, have been friends for those 13 years. He said they had their fifth child last wow. July. That's the end. That's it. That's the end. They've got five now, including triplets. And the tackle is made by Dixon Edwards as Carter gets out near the 26-yard line. When they came in, and you talk about balanced attacks. And when Dallas came into this game, they were the most balanced team in football. But they're a little bit out of whack in the first half. They threw 19 passes and only nine rushes. And you see what Minnesota did. And that's why they controlled the game. You know, 18 minutes possession to 11. And change for Dallas. 10-9 is the score, second down and five. Smith. Oh, boy. There, there have been some co collisions, and Leon Lett looks like he's hurt. Boy, you know, Haley went out for a while with a hamstring. Lett bounces up, and but this is, uh, it underscores how the Cowboys are a little bit different. They do not have the proven depth that they've had in the past. And they got Chad Hennings, who's a good third tackle. He's over, over McDaniels right here, number 64. You'll see him. That's an all-pro guard he just shot yeah, inside. Yeah, McDaniel weighs 275 pounds. It just kind of disposed of him. It was a pile, one of those pile-up things. Same Second. kind of thing they had with Chris Hansen. Second, Flower. Yeah. Third and six. Flower is spelled F-J-L-O-U-R. <laughs> There's one. There's one. <laughs> 
push-off here one way or the other. Let's see. This could go against Reed. And that's what the Cowboys are arguing. Well, speaking of, yep. of push-offs, you know, you mentioned the anniversary of the uh, of the past 20 years ago mm -hmm. when Drew Pearson caught it. That was a classic push-off. Well, only now is Drew conceding that maybe he touched Nate Wright. Pass interference by the offense. Yep. Uh, it's kind of a mini push, but uh, he got busted. You know, if they're going to call defensive backs for all the little ticky-tack stuff, they should call the receivers uh, from time to time, and they did there on Reed. You know, that, uh, that game was played at the old Metropolitan yep. Stadium mm -hmm. in December of 1975. The Cowboys came up here as a wild card play. And the, the, the Hail Mary pass is remembered by so many, but two plays before the Hail Mary, the Cowboys had a fourth and 16, and Roger Staubach hit Drew Pearson for a gain of 25. That was really a significant play. Yeah, I think Drew may have pushed. You know, he did. Jake Reed. But you know what? Not, not a bad penalty. Because I think Jake Reed is going to blow by Larry Brown on that one. He didn't tackle him, but he did the next best thing. He made sure he was not going to run by him cleanly. So second half matchup, Jake Reed and Larry Brown going at it. Last time Larry Brown won the matchup. And if that, that was an intentional interference by Larry Brown, and that is a smart play for him. Because he was going to blow by him. He was beaten. And he knew it. He applauded himself. Yeah, he deserves to be he applauded. Sure did. That is the first Dallas penalty tonight. And it gives the Vikings a first down at the 35-yard line. 10-9 Minnesota. Carter comes left. Boom, goes right. Pulls it back up, goes deep. Oh, Chris Carter and Larry Brown. Marion was back as a center fielder, but Larry Brown had good coverage. He did. But you give Chris Carter a chance, and that's all you could ask for. I mean, he's come up with some big plays on third downs. This was a first down, and they're trying to get him right down the scene. Good rush by Tony Tolbert. I mean, that kind of disrupted the rhythm and didn't allow Moon to set up. And here's the coverage at the end. So Larry Brown has been involved in a lot of plays to start this second half that we can think of. Yeah. Second and ten. I got my calculator. You are. Oh, you're on your game tonight, Bert. Oh, I tell you. Get me in the land of Lepsa, and I just <laughs> soar. Uh, there's a second down, and there's no game. <laughs> Ampli, number 32. Todd Stusey, who started every offensive down last year as a rookie, going against Haley tonight. He's number 73 there for the Vikings. That's a, that's a pretty good block by Stusey. And, and you mentioned it, every single play as a rookie has a left tackle. I mean, he learned some valuable lessons. He came to camp this year and told Brian Biddock, the offensive coordinator, hey, I don't need as much help this year. You know, help the other rookie, Corey Springer, who's playing right tackle. Second year, out of Cal. off Larry Brown again. But Larry Brown's had a pretty good uh, quarter, hasn't he, this far? In the first half, we saw him make some tackles, some, some physical plays, but the Vikings have been testing Larry Brown this second half, and he has responded. These guys have to cut on the nose the same place, I guess, because they're all wearing those band-aids. Well, everybody's cut themselves shaving in the same spot. I think they're <laughs> making a fashion statement. <laughs> I think you're right. It's hard, Here's... <laughs> it's hard to get off those things. Hey, if Jerry Rice does it, yeah. it's in good. It it Kevin Williams is counter punch off the Saxon punt. He's out to the 28-yard line. And time has been called. The Cowboys get it back. They trail by one. It's 10-9 Vikings. TNT's got movies you gotta see. Why you gotta see them? what everyone else steals from. Watch TNT's movies you gotta see. Starting Tuesday night at 8.
finally here, Dallas Acock Auto. Acock Auto is located at 3249 West Northwest Highway in Dallas. Acock Auto also has top name brand stereos such as Hyphonics, Pioneer, Orion, JVC, and Infinity. And don't forget, everything you purchase can be installed on site with the hottest award-winning installation group in the Metroplex. For more information, call 214-351-2020. That's 351-2020. Acock Auto. Now, about Harris Methodist Health Plan. Look, here's what their members say. More than 9 out of 10 are satisfied with their doctor's care. More than 9 out of 10 members are planning to renew. And over the past six years, 96% of the companies who joined Harris Methodist Health Plan are still there. Kate, you've done your homework. Well, my health plan, too. are young, untamed, and unknown. That makes them dangerous to big game trackers. Like Reggie White and the Green Bay Packers. Sunday night, the Jaguars stalk the Packers. But first, TNT wraps up the NFL's busiest day, one hour before the game with pro football tonight. And then, the Packers, the Jaguars, next Sunday at 8 on TNT. We'll be in Jacksonville next Sunday night. We've still got a full half of football tonight at the Metrodome. Minnesota leads it 10-9. Mike Zimmer, the defensive back coach, talking with Larry Brown and his uh, teammates. Brock Marion on the right side. Well, they have to be satisfied with the opening defensive series of this half. Troy Aikman, 11 of 18 for 108. And a touchdown to Michael Irvin. Irvin's caught five for 71. That's Kevin Williams in motion. some pressure that time and is on the ground not injured yeah, he, he, just has, down. he has had you know, like three one hoppers and, and that's because of inside pressure when you can't step up to deliver the ball you got that inside push it's hard to throw the deep out cut and that's why they come up short a couple times because some good inside pressure that time it was Roy Parker Here's Wade Wilson, who is the backup in Dallas now. And, of course, Wade, the starting quarterback for a number of years here at Minnesota. Watch right here. You're going to watch Jack Del Rio come right through this hole and make a play. As soon as Del Rio sees the guard leave, he didn't overrun it. See, he didn't overrun. He was very patient play there by Jack Del Rio and a good one. And the Cowboys still searching for their first third down conversion of the night. They are over six. They're looking at third and nine. And Jack Del Rio looks at them. Four man rush, no blitz. Aikman. Will be enough for the first down at the 40-yard line. That's the first conversion of the evening. Yeah, and only the second uh, catch for Jay Novacek tonight. And he's a guy that, you know, over the course of a game can really hurt you. He's on the right side, the tight end over here, that's Jay Novacek. And again, if you give Troy Aikman some time, Barry Switzer said, if we just protect him, we can eat these guys up. That time, it was pretty good... Uh, Pretty good protection. They didn't jam Jay Novacek, and when he does that, he runs free and he catches a lot of balls. First and ten from the Cowboy 40 yard line, back to the eye. Quits. Aikman pumps once, goes deep. Good coverage downfield, almost picked off. They doubled Michael Irvin, and Dwayne Washington and Charles Mincy were in pretty good position. Did you see Emmett Smith, though? I mean, Emmett Smith made a heck of a block on the blitzing linebacker. I mean, sometimes you worry about running backs protecting your quarterback on a blitz. But Emmett is a good blocker. He's a tough football player. It's the Barnett, the strong safety. He, he destroys him. He just blows him up. And that allows Aikman to follow through this time and get the ball downfield. Now, it was an incompletion, but that pass wouldn't even gotten off had it not been for Emmett Smith's block. In the first two games, 
Here's Smith. Mincy. Roderick Thomas. And assorted others. You're right. They're off, uh, Vern. But to beat the Cowboys, it is a 60-minute ball game. You, you can't play them for 56 or 58. or You have to play them for 60 minutes. Otherwise, they'll beat you. So uh, as well as it's gone thus far for Minnesota, I mean, it's a one-point game. And then with the weapons that the Cowboys have, if they get in rhythm, they can put up a couple touchdowns quickly. Third and two. the middle by Larry Allen, his right guard, number 73, who dominates Randall that time. Ray Donaldson blows his guy away. Almost fumbled that ball. Almost fumbled it. But you keep feeding him the ball. Picked up an extra 8, 10 yards after a very forceful straight arm as well. 45-yard gain for Emmett Smith. He's got 81 on 11 carries. defensive line and linebackers and Smith is caught for a loss back at the nine-yard line John Randall we haven't mentioned him a lot tonight. no you know and this is what Emmett Smith has seen a lot of tonight burn There's a lot of purple jerseys right when he gets the ball Ed McDaniel number 58 get some help from Randall and Harlan Barnett the strong safety we come to you from the Metrodome in Minneapolis. Vern Lundquist and Pat Hayden. The Cowboys trailing by one. A missed extra point. The difference. They've got a second and goal. Here's Aikman. Quick set. Those shots they scored on this last week against Denver. Boy, this time he gets it down to the four-yard line. Is he alone? I mean, he should have been stopped about six yards prior to where he did. About Johnston doing the subtle things to help you win football games. He's the man in motion, number 48. It's a simple little pass. The accurate throw allows him to do something with the with the ball after the catch. If you force the running back to adjust the ball, you can't do anything. But it was such a perfect throw, he can do something with the ball after the catch. Third and goal from the three. Gonna try to run that one in. There's Ed Hockley. Timeout, Minnesota, before the ball was snapped. That's their first charge team timeout. Not sure why they did it, <laughs> but they did it. We'll be back. We're proud to announce that lease terms on the 1995 Trooper are not only the lowest they've been all year, but at $2.99 a month and zero down, they're really something to think about. Like, how do you actually put zero down? And if you put zero down, how does anyone know you really put it down? And if you wash your pants with zero down in the pocket, will you find it later in the dryer? It's a paradox inside of a riddle wrapped in an enigma. jeans and casual clothes. We studied hundreds, thousands of regular folks to learn their shapes and sizes. And then designed jeans that give them a great looking fit. You'll find it's like we knew your size exactly, somehow. Riders jeans, cut to make real people look real good. So the Nittany Lions of the Fighting Irish have given us another great college football game. And here are two tired generals looking for each other at midfield. Tough break, Joe. Yeah, I know. The tie's too much. It's nice, but maybe next time something in a crew neck. Uh, how do you think that'd be too casual? Collect a Burger King Legends of College Football Cup. Free when you upsize your Whopper value meal for just 39 cents. Look, Joe, it's not the end of the world. Next cup, think pastels. Eight oh six to go, third quarter, and the Cowboys facing a third down and three. They got here on the legs of Emmett Smith, a forty-five yard scamper, gave them a first and goal. 
They're now looking at third and goal from the three. In a week ago against Denver, they ran a little pick play, and Daryl Johnson caught the ball out in the right flat and scored on it. Minnesota's defensive assistant looks on. Yeah, pretty good play there by Corey Fuller again, Vern. We tested the rookie, and Corey Fuller responded one more time. First, you put the try to put the pressure on Aikman, but it was very good protection. Throwing darts. And the reaction on the sideline of the Cowboys. Kendall Watkins. Back up tight end. Here's Bunyol. He missed the extra point. Novacek with a hold. Whoa! That's unbelievable. Whoa! Boy. Uh-oh. My goodness. That's two of them. And he missed looked, an extra point. Looked like a good snap. It was a good hold. That's, that's on the kicker. That's not the snapper or the holder. That's on the kicker. It's still 10-9, Vikings. We're proud to announce that lease terms on the 1995 Trooper are not only the lowest they've been all year, but at $2.99 a month and zero down, they're really something to think about. Like, how do you actually put zero down? And if you put zero down, how does anyone know you really put it down? And if you wash your pants with zero down in the pocket, will you find it later in the dryer? It's a paradox inside of a riddle wrapped in an enigma. This guided missile is brought to you by Ken Norton and his Reebok NFL Pro-Line jacket, who reminds you that players are made in the preseason. To achieve success for me it's the details in golf that means taking it one stroke at a time and at jiffy lube we do it one car at a time and we offer the quality of pennzoil so even though we've serviced almost a hundred million cars the one that matters most is the one we're working on now if it doesn't say jiffy lube it just isn't jiffy lube Time now for the Azuzu play of the day. It's courtesy James Hasty of the Chiefs. In the Raiders Chiefs game at Arrowhead, tied at 17 in overtime, Hasty steps in front of a Jeff Hospitler pass, and he is going to go 64 yards down the sideline for the game winning touchdown, the practically amazing Azuzu play of the day. Well, right here, the practically amazing Dallas Cowboys have self destructed. We've had three or four drops. A fumble from Emmett Smith and Chris Bonyol with a missed extra point and a missed 20-yard field goal. 10-9, Minnesota. First and 10 Vikings, Warren Moon will hand it off to Robert Smith. He does have that glider style, he doesn't does. he? And again, because of that and that long stride and the angular body, people just really, I think they're they fooled by his speed. And because of that, they, they don't take the right angle and they miss him. He overruns their people overrun him or underrun him. Now what the Vikings desperately need this year is a runner they can depend upon all season. And tonight, or actually this season, Robert Smith has been that guy. And if they can develop him as a threat, this could be a pretty good Viking team. Smith has 60 yards on 13 carries now. Second and one. Dixon Edwards decide to treat him like he's in a rodeo. You know, it's kind of surprising, speaking of Clayton Holmes, who made that tackle, that the Vikings really haven't tried working on him. He's a replacement for Kevin Smith. Uh, played very well last week against Denver. John Elway did test him three times. He responded all three. And, but the Vikings have been working on Larry Brown and not Clayton Holmes. They did get the touchdown off Clayton Holmes. Jake Reed caught it in the first half. 
Robert Smith, the number one draft choice two years ago in 93, suffered a torn anterior cruciate ligament late in the rookie season. And uh, so was really limited last year in, the, in his year of recovery to third down plays. He then had a contract holdout this summer, something new in sports, <laughs> and uh, something unusual, and uh, came in late, but really has played very well in the first three games. Here's Dixon Edwards getting helped off. Robert Smith is kind of an interesting guy. You know, has uh, a lot of off-the-field interest as well. There is life outside of yeah. football. Knows the difference between a gerund and a participle. <laughs> good, he can teach me. That pass is good to the 40. Amp Lee, number 32. Robert Jones, the middle linebacker. A part of the tackle. You don't know... No. Jaron's a participle? I was absent that day. Okay. Yeah. I weren't paying attention. And Amp Lee is, the, is the kind of the receiver out of the backfield. He has to fight through his own guys and then make find the window to the quarterback. I mean, that's it's a small little gain, but uh, Amp Lee had to do quite a bit to, to gain that those, those few yards. Dangling part of yeah. was a sign of the Garfield platoon. Yeah. played well and when they've had to have these tough little inside runs they've either gotten them from Robert Smith or this time Amp Lee breaks an arm tackle and they convert on another uh, first down or they get another first down and the time of possession becomes more and more of a factor out to Robert Smith and it's incomplete now let's take a look at the Coors Light scoreboard 49ers roll in the second half Denver Rod Smith with a great catch off of an Elway pass San Diego comes back and defeats Philadelphia Green Bay wins in a tussle with the Giants Day as a pro. Uh, Emmett Smith resting for the moment. Second down and 10, 10, 9. Minnesota leads. Into the flat caught by Adrian Andrew Jordan, number 89, and that'll bring up another third down. The Vikings are 6 of 11 on third down conversions tonight. Well, and part of that is because of what they've done on first and second down, Vern. They're not getting themselves in a lot of third and longs. I mean, they're dinking the ball here, running the ball there, and they find themselves a lot, I think, in third and four or less. Now, here's a third and uh, probably about five or six. But they, uh, they've won the first and second downs, and that's the big, the big reason. Third and five, 10-9, Minnesota. Number 55, the middle linebacker, got a hand up. And, and that's a good play because I think Warren Moon had something going down the middle. That, that, that ball was thrown with some velocity, it was thrown with some direction. And Robert Jones, who's 6'2, gets a hand on it. Yeah, he, well, that, that could have been a touch. That could have been a touch to Amp Lee. Big play by Robert Jones. That brings on Mike Saxon. Kevin Williams waits for the return at the 10 yard line. there and who is stretched out in an injured position at the 40-yard line. Here's how close Marion came. Time has been called. We'll be right back. Look at him. That's my generation. They call us baby boomers. We lead every generation in American history in such things as power and money and position. We also lead every generation in American history in such things as divorce and suicide, drug abuse, and loneliness. 
Many are finding that the something they've looked for within to fill the void of life is really someone. It's never too late for a new beginning. It's not so much the heat. It's the humidity. Get wet and cool down this summer at J. Peppy's Tex-Mex with happy hour daily from 11 to 7 and 5.99 pitchers of margaritas every Monday. And if you're too hot to sleep, we're open late every night with food till midnight and drinks till 2. J. Pepe's hot Tex-Mex in a very cool environment. Got me going sideways, upside down, in and out. I don't want to hear any details. Oh, come on, Chief. I was going to tell you what's going on. Love is crazy. And TNT turns up the Southern Charm with two episodes of Bubba every night this week, Monday through Friday. He's quite a hunk. Get a hunk of Vernon Bubba Bubba beginning tomorrow at 6 on TNT. I must admit there are times... Minnesota, 325 to go third quarter. Sometimes I talk when I shouldn't, and sometimes I don't talk when I should. I'm going to learn. But there's Johnny Lever. I've known John as an assistant coach for four different teams in 15 years. He says the Cowboy offensive line is the best offensive line he's ever seen in the NFL. Pretty good test. That catch is made at the 24-yard line. John was a coach at New Orleans, the Chicago Bears, most recently with the Denver Broncos. He just came over as the new line coach of the uh, Minnesota Vikings. And before the game, he said, this offensive line is out. I think one, and I think one of them's injured. Whoops. Calf muscle. Yeah, that's, that's big Eric Williams. And, and big is, is, is right. All 322 pounds of them. And that is a concern, Barry Switzer. Things thus far have not gone the way he'd like. We'll be right back. We're out of here. No, oh. oh, please keep your hands in the cart. We'll come back for that later. That one needs batteries. You're going to get Daddy in trouble. Excuse me? No, that one definitely has too many parts. We got to go. Oh. Now we're offering some of the best prices of the year on our 1995 rodeos. Introduces Performax 100, 100% synthetic at a breakthrough price. 100% synthetic at a price this slow? How'd they do that? Leave it to Pennzoil to make synthetic affordable. <laughs> How'd they do that? Hey, there's more. An extra $6 rebate on a case. Huh. Or $6 off on an oil change by the pros. How'd they do that? Engine problems? Before you try a tune-up, try gum out first. The solution could be less than $5. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League, and it is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Minnesota Vikings and the National Football League is prohibited. I'll bet they know the difference in a gerund and a participle. Well, that's right. That's probably what they're talking about. <laughs> Eric Williams on the sidelines, Juan Stone has taken his spot. 25, maybe the 26. It'll be third down, 2.40 to go. Third quarter, Ed McDaniel, number 58. Well, the Cowboys, as this third counter, uh, third quarter winds down, have always been a very good fourth quarter team. And that a, lot, a lot of that is because they've had great depth. And they're fresh in the fourth quarter. Some of that depth is gone. And it remains to, see, to be seen if they're going to be as good a fourth quarter team this year. Uh, Ron Stone is uh, one of those backups. 
Corey Fleming is in on third down and two. Four-man Viking rush. Pass is caught by Novacek to the 35. That's another first down. Yeah, well, Ron Stone did his job on Roy Barker that time. I mean, if you don't have, you know, uh, 15 guys on offense and come in and fill in at spots at tight ends. That's number 65 is Stone. Again, granted, he's just going to push Roy Barker right past the quarterback, but that's all he has to do. Barker's momentum really took him out of the play. Ron Stone, a third-year man from Boston College, a fourth-round draft choice in 93. First and 10, Dallas, after the nine-yard game. 10-9, Minnesota. Johnson, a rare moose call. <laughs> and Nate Newton helps lead the way. Newton, who told us yesterday that he is the sexiest, prettiest 320-pounder in the league. Well, I, I wasn't going to argue with him. No, not, no, nor agree with him. But you know what? <laughs> Everybody makes you know, fun of his size. He's, he's a very quotable, likable guy, but he's a pretty good football player, too. Yes, he you is. Know, he, he really is. He's part of that offensive mind that's been playing together for a long time, part of this unit that's played together for a long time. Second down. Man. They popped Novacek pretty good. Harlan Barnett, who played last year in New England, and Charles Mincy, who played last year at Kansas City. Well, well, Vern, this is only the third game we've done this year, but this is the best defensive effort I have seen this year, and that's by the Minnesota Vikings. I mean, they're, they're shutting down some pretty good weapons of the Cowboys. And Emmett Smith had one big run, but other than that, they've done a pretty good job on Emmett. They've taken away Novacek. Michael Irvin did, did catch the touchdown, but he only has six catches. And it's third and six now. Final minute, third quarter. Aikman, right side for Kevin Williams, incomplete. Corey Fuller, who's done a dandy job at left corner tonight. How about the rookie? He has played great. Never intimidated. Bottom of the screen, number 27. They're going right after him, and they want it all on this play. Stumbles a little bit early in the play. They didn't call that pass interference because they felt it was not catchable. And Kevin Williams has not caught a ball tonight. I think this team right now misses the big plays of Alvin Hartman. John Jack is on the punt. Wait for it. That one sails. Farmer with a fair catch. Huge punt by John Jett. And the Vikings take over following the Palmer fair catch at their own 10-yard line. Coming up after the game, TNT presents a tribute to a quarterback who led the 49ers to four Super Bowl victories. Watch a special encore presentation of Joe Montana, the fire inside, tonight on TNT. It's the best I ever saw, Joe Montana. I mean, this guy was so good in big games. And I think you measure quarterbacks, uh, the like, number of championships they win, and how many times they bring the team behind, and, and he did as well as anybody. First and ten, Minnesota. And between us, we've won four Super Bowls. <laughs> and one round of scholarship. <laughs> Reed! Wow, somebody got a hand up, and Larry Brown makes the tackle. I thought it was going to be blocked. Jake Reed. That is a first down, Jake. Wow. That's a big play. And you know, everybody's all concerned about Chris Carter. You forget that they have another big play receiver on the other side. Hands up with Charles Haley. Gets his hands up. But he had Larry Brown beaten early in that route. And he uses his, you know, you have to use your size and position as well. And he did. That's a big play by Jake Reed. They needed him tonight, and he has been there tonight. Reed has caught five. The Vikings lead with a quarter to play. We'll be back in the Metrodome after this. Good news for the Chris Hinton family. The injury, uh, the x-rays, rather, were negative. He went to the bench in the locker room in the first half with a knee injury, but looks like he's going to be okay. Chris Hinton, the right guard of the Vikings. His team leads it 10 9 as we start the final quarter. Here's Robert. There's a tough run of five yards. Eric.
Eric Williams strained left calf. He will not return for the remainder of the night. And you mentioned Chris Hinton being out. His, his replacement's Everett Lindsay, and he's playing over Russell Maryland. Now, Dave Campbell, the defensive coordinator for the Cowboys, was saying to us this week that Russell Maryland is his best fourth quarter player. David Dixon is now in, number 71. Got the better of Russell Maryland there. There's David Dixon, number 71, Pat, from New Zealand. Came uh, to the States. He was a rugby player. He played at a uh, Mormon school, Ricks College in Idaho, and then transferred down to Arizona State. Hasn't played football all that much. He was on the practice squad of the Cowboys in 1993. As a defensive player. Right. Yeah. David Dixon. Now, he is, as they say, or we Marsh. are saying more often, yes. <laughs> Uh, he is a gerund and a Our participle side, the together. The right tackle jumped in the neutral zone. Uh, 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 Five-yard penalty results in a first like down. That, you? Yeah. I think I'm Look that up that next week. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. A yeah. gerund is a verb that acts like a noun and ends in ing. A participle is a verb that acts like an adjective and ends in several suffixes. You are welcome to the continuing <laughs> education. No, I just, just thought you'd be interested. You know. <laughs> Clayton Holmes covering. Jake Reed. There it is. Ah, which is boil, boil, double trouble. <laughs> yeah. All right. I see you wanted to know how you make loot fisk. This is it, huh? Well, it's codfish soaked in lye oh, for a long, long time. Then you boil, you put it in ice, you mm. bring it indoors. And what do you do with it? You put a newt's eye in there. <laughs> then what do you do with it? Stupid, you eat you it, drink, drink it, you're stupid, you eat it. <laughs> <laughs> no thanks. Second and ten. Oh, boy, it'll be third and ten at the 50. Jake Reed's made a lot of big plays tonight, but he probably should have had that one. And one of the few times that the Vikings find themselves in a third and long, a third and ten. And this is where Charles Haley and Tony Tolbert on the outside can really put some heat on the quarterback. So on third and ten, you better make sure you get Haley blocked. Even it means keeping a back end, a chicken. Todd Stussy goes against Haley. Corey Stringer against Tony Tolbert. Third and ten. Shotgun. They stunt four-man rush. Moon goes deep left. For corner, overthrows him into the Cowboy bench area. Yeah, the key thing here, though, for, for Mike Saxon, the punter of the Vikings, do not punt this ball in the end zone. You know, you can pin him back there inside the 20 and, and give, give your defense good field position, but do not give him a freebie to the 20-yard line. Mike Saxon was a Cowboy punter for a long time when he came to the club from San Diego State in 85. He still lives in the Dallas area, has some golfing buddies up here, as a matter of fact, watching the game. It goes in the end zone, but it doesn't matter. So the Cowboys have blocked 13 punts and kicks over the last five years. They really did, they did not take a good angle on that one. If you come up the middle, you got to make sure you're going to block it, Vern, because if you don't, you're going to run into the punter. Joe Avizano, the special teams coach, said to us last night, we are a special teams unit in a state of transition. Number 87, Billy, Billy Davis. Davis. And number 42, Charlie Williams. That's only the five-yard variety. It's an adolescent penalty and not the adult version, so it will not be a first down. Mm. Wow. My. There's Billy Davis. I thought it was kind of the adult version. Myself. I did, too. And one guy goes low, another guy comes high. really hurt his left leg there actually but they're going to punt it again again you can't punt the ball in the end zone and i don't think they'll come after this time mike saxon kevin williams waits at the 10. that's going to be too far no, I... no. that's a bad punt Yep. Can't punt in the end zone. That's a bad punt. 
just gave uh, the Cowboys 20 yards. Well, if you're a lip reader, you know how Mike Saxon feels about it. <laughs> if you're not a lip reader, you probably know as well. Taint good news. <laughs> Lower your right foot and repeat after me. I promise to be free. I promise to be different. I promise to take the other path. I promise to be unique. I promise to drive an Eldorado with a 300 horsepower North Star V8. A suspension that reads faster than Evelyn Wood and a body that parts traffic. Eldorado with the North Star system by Cadillac. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here to <gasps> dull. It doesn't have to be. And now the starting lineup. Whoa. That groom from Texas, Billy Clyde Humphrey. And at Pride, a 5'6 debutante from Alabama, Nell Peterson. The Humphrey wedding brought to you by Miller Lite. When you've got the great taste of an ice cold Miller Lite, life is good. The vows are up. I do. I do. And they're good. Whoa, Nelly. That was beautiful, man. 1332 remaining in this one. Dallas and Minnesota week three and the Cowboys up 10-9. Missed field goal, missed extra point for Dallas. 20-yard field goal, fumble. They've really sputtered offensively and yet they're only down one. Yeah, and, and the Cowboys are one of those fourth quarter teams. You know, you let them hang around for long enough and they've got enough weapons they can knock you out. So, you know, you still, even though Evan Smith has struggled, I wouldn't be surprised to him give him the ball a bunch of times this fourth quarter and let something good happen. I mean, he's that kind of player. You, you want to give a guy like that the ball now. Cowboys take over following the Saxon punt at their own 20-yard line. Troy Aikman for the night, 15 of 27 for 139 yards. One touchdown. He's been sacked only once. Total yardage now, 219 for the Cowboys, 210 for Minnesota. And two big plays, one for either team, a 44-yard run for Robert Smith for the Vikings, a 45-yard run, Emmett Smith for the Cowboys. the safety blitz this is a really good defensive game plan that Tony Dungy has put together Vern I mean they did it last week against one player Barry Sanders this week they've done it against a whole bunch of great players Aiken Smith Johnson Irvin Jay Novacek I mean this is as good a defensive game plan as you're gonna see and as well executed defensive game plan as you're going to see. Second and ten. Blitz is threatened. Aikman back. Left side caught by Moose Johnson. He's got Donaldson in front. And Johnson all the way out to the 45-yard line. And they changed the pace. The Cowboys for the first time tonight run a finesse play. I mean, they've been a power team most of this evening. They changed the pace. Ernie Zampezi calls a little uh, screen pass to the left. Perfectly timed. And Daryl Johnston, watch the thing how he makes the last defender miss, too, Vern. He picks up an extra eight yards, but he kind of jumps over the last defender and picks up an extra eight yards. There. Puts his hand down, and, and that's a nice play. Very good play. 24-yard gain, first and ten. Nova check in motion. Here's Emmett Smith. What does he do? The break a tackle, breaks another, and scoots through for a gain of 14 yards. Dwayne Washington makes the tackle. Yeah, they're going to take care of the nose tackle, number 98, Ezra Tuolo. They just double him, destroy the nose tackle, and that allows Emmett to jump through. And uh, Smith combines power and grace, but it's always the power that comes first. Emmett Smith is now four yards away from his 36th, 37th, 100-yard game. Down. I tell you, though, it, it has been a tough 96 yards thus far. I mean, he's had two big runs, and he's been kind of stuffed 12 other times. Before the ball was snapped, ball start by the offense, number 65. The five-yard penalty remains first down. But that's okay. I mean, I, I think when you talk about Emmitt Smith, the great quarterbacks bring their teams from behind, and great running backs 
ex exert themselves in the fourth quarter. Emmett Smith has been a great fourth quarter running back in his career. Chatting with him last night, he's uh, he's such a fun man to talk to him about his art or his craft. And he said he looks at his, his effort as a painting. And they get it down inside the 45 to the 43. Just to wrap it up about him, and we'll be talking about him for the rest of the night. But he said he sees his runs as a series of brush strokes. And then at the end of the night, he gets great pleasure when it's gone well to look back at the hole and realize that it is a thing of beauty. A rather eloquent way of talking, yeah. eloquent way of talking about what he does for a living. I always probably hung up uh, hung very nice pictures in his den because he's had a beautiful a bunch of beautiful artwork in his six year career and this has been a tough one but one you can appreciate too. Aikman back play action blitz coming they go across the middle there's number check first down at the 28. They are an outstanding fourth quarter team. And this drive began at the 20 following the Saxon punt. Well, Jay Novacek, number 84, no jam, gets off cleanly. If you're going to slow Jay Novacek down, you've got to jam him at the line of scrimmage. Nobody does. It's he against McDaniel. It's an athletic catch of a well-thrown ball by Aikman, and the Cowboys are on the move. Novacek, four catches, 42 yards. First and 10 at the 28. They fake the toss, and Aikman wants the screen pass. inside the 10 to the 5 down at the one yard line oh boy that was a nice play second screen there are two flags down the second screen they've run to their left on this drive and both of them have worked magnificently there'll be a penalty against the Vikings so they'll have a first down inside the 5 offside by the defense number 93 the penalty is declined first down they give the Cowboys some credit for adjusting the fake to the pitch to Emmett. He attracts a crowd. They threw the earlier screen to Johnson, this time to Novacek. You get Michael Irvin screening his guy off, Ray Donaldson powering his guy, and the Cowboys have first and goal. Emmett Smith has rushed for a touchdown in nine consecutive games. That is a Cowboy club record. The Cowboys have a first and goal at the two with Emmett Smith the deep back. Make it 10 games in a row. They're going to go for two. I think they should go for two here. Yeah. You know, he, he was upset ever since he fumbled the ball in this, in this football game. Talking about Emmett Smith. But he atoned for it here in the fourth quarter where he's been a dominant player during his career. That offensive line, this is where you need guys to, to stay low, just give you a little crease. The good lead block by Johnston. And even though he gets hit, he didn't take the clean shot, spin in midair, and gets the ball in the end zone. And now they go for two. Cowboys have never converted a two-point play. Had a good throw. Had a good catch. <laughs> this guy was covered. Novacek was covered. And it starts with a touchdown. They gave him the chance, the two-point play. A great fourth-quarter drive where the Cowboys have always been tough. And the Cowboys have a 17-10 lead. He was cool and uncanny. But with one tick left on the clock, Joe Montana was the comeback kid. But it started young, hating to lose. Joe Montana, the fire inside. Tonight, after the NFL on TNT. Big Billy Barrett sends in the savings. Program powerhouse savings on hundreds of pre-owned program cars. You could score a $5,000 difference. So, why pay the new car price? Big Billy Barrett's Program Car Super Center sells you 95 Mirages as low as $99.88, 95 Galants, $11,988 with full factory warranties. 
get program powerhouse savings at Big Billy Barrett Mitsubishi, LBJ between Oates and Galloway. The Rolex 24 at Daytona, America's toughest sports car race. At the Daytona International Speedway, drivers like five-time champion Hurley Haywood race 24 hours through the heat of day and dark of night. Hurley and his Rolex are up to the rugged demands of this legendary race. Rolex, the choice of champions. Bockendorf's, your official Rolex jeweler, serving you at these locations. for movies you see now. See them because they're the movies that everyone steals from. See them because they're the movies that made guys like Tarantino, Coppola, and Spielberg say, Hey, I don't want to make movies you gotta see. When it comes to movies you gotta see, it doesn't get any better than this. And you can only see them on TNT, starting Tuesday night at 8. Cowboys go 80 yards in seven plays. It took only three minutes and 35 seconds. Emmett Smith gets the touchdown, and he has now scored 77 rushing touchdowns in 80 games. Take a look at the rushing ratio. Jim Brown had 106 and 118, and Emmett's uh, in that category. Walter Payton, of course, the leader with 110 in 190 games. Here's the kick by John Baker. Cowboys up by seven. David Palmer at the five. Watch out! Watch out! <laughs> no, he is kind of fun to watch, isn't he? Let's go back to the two-point play because I think this is a remarkable throw and a great catch by Jay, Jay Novacek. Now, he is covered. Right there, uh, he's going to be in the middle of your screen right now. He's covered by Broderick Thomas. And the ball was thrown away from the defender. He caught it all hands. That, that is pretty good. That, that's throwing darts, and that's catching a pass when you're well covered. And that's two points for the Cowboys. Warren Moon back as a signal caller. And here's Charles Evans out of the backfield with a catch at the 41. That's a two-yard pickup. And the defensive job done by Robert Jones. I think this is an important part of the game for the Vikings. I mean, everybody knows how good the Cowboys are, but the Vikings are in that mass of teams, the NFC. They're trying to prove themselves. And be able to come back against the Cowboys right now, I, I think, would give them a big lift for the rest of the season. and be a real, could be, one of those turning points. behind him in front of Clayton Holmes it'll be third down and eight and twice now in this fourth quarter Vern they've gotten themselves in third and long first three quarters they weren't in third and long but twice this time they have in this half only 25 yards on the ground for the Vikings only 45 yards passing the ball they led 10 nine and a half total of 82 yards now that's Pretty good coverage by Clayton Holmes. His coaching staff says Clayton Holmes is the best athlete on the ball club. Boy, did Tony Tolbert get a hold of Warren Moon. I mean, one of the reasons Clayton Holmes was able to, to cover Jake Reed that time and do it pretty well is because of the rush of Tony Tolbert. But, you know, Elway tested uh, Holmes three times deep last week. Didn't really convert. They test him here. That's pretty good coverage again by Clayton. Mike Saxon on to punt. The return is on all the way. Saxon. Kevin Williams at the 22. Oh, nice return. Maybe he should have punted in the end zone. <laughs> 8.45 remaining in this one. And the Cowboys have assumed command. They are up by seven. Only one has the moves of Barry Sanders. Only one has his acceleration. 
Only one has his control. Only one has such breathtakingly perfect balance. Seville STS with the North Star system. A great performer creates a higher standard. of regular folks to learn their shapes and sizes. And then design jeans that give them a great looking fit. You'll find it's like we knew your size exactly, somehow. Riders jeans, cut to make real people look real good. 8.45 remaining in regulation play. You see one of the uh, number of NFL films photographers documenting what's going on in this game. They began their efforts in both Dallas and Minneapolis earlier this week for a special 90-minute show that will be called Six Days to Sunday. It'll air on TNT on November 8th. They've had complete access to both uh, ball clubs, and I think Denny Green is Mike during the game. I'm not sure if Barry Switzer is. That'll air November 8th, first and 10. Irvin. And here's where the Cowboy offensive line, I think, can make the difference in the ball game. Uh, both in the pass protection, as they did there for Aikman, and in running the ball for Emmett Smith. This is the, 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 the time when this offensive line can wear you down. Good cut block there by Ron Stone allowed the uh, ball to get unimpeded to uh, Michael Irvin. Michael with seven catches for 84 yards now. Closing in. gone over 100 again. Ed McDaniel with a tackle. A good trap block there. Real good trap block by Larry Allen, the right guard. What he doesn't see, he feels. He just has a great sense of where people are, where his guys are, where the enemy is, and that's what makes him a one sensation back. The best running back what? in football today. play on defense. They need a turnover. Number 93 beats Nate Newton quickly with a speed rush. And once he gets the speed rush going, look out. I mean, Nate Newton had a pretty good day so far against John Randall, but that time John Randall just blew right by him. That's a loss of eight. It's second down and 18. It's the second sack of the season for Troy Aikman. We said at the very beginning of the show, the Vikings needed two or three defensive turnovers to win it. Tony Dungy teams create turnovers. Now that ball was just a, 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 mis, a mishandled snap, but nonetheless, the Vikings come up with their second turnover again. I don't think Aikman, Aikman ever touched that ball. It went right through his hands. Ray Donaldson hiked it right through Troy Aikman's hands. See that? Never hit him. Well, that was a strange snap. Very strange. And Del Rio comes up with it. That's the second turnover for the Minnesota Viking defense. They trail by seven. They have the ball at the Cowboys, 48. Robert Smith starts right, comes back inside, and runs into Tony Talbert, number 92. 
Boy, has he been uh, good as a coordinator here. Look what's happened since 1992 when Tony came here. 17 defensive touches, touchdowns over the past three seasons. Interceptions, sacks, takeaways. It's incredible. Absolutely incredible. Someday there will be a head coaching job. Yeah, open for him. And it's, and it's no accident that that's good coaching and good playing. James Harris, 99, gets credit for the fumble recovery in second down and nine. 6.25 to go. Warren Moon comes right. Caught and dropped. Charles Haley. Uh, tough time to take a sack. Second down. sack tonight for Haley. Yeah, down by seven points. And you go from second and ten. If you throw your ball away to third and forever. And you have to account for him. You have to know where he is. And you have to double team him. That was a single block it looked like on Charles Haley. And he is a sack waiting to happen. It's Stussy. Gets the single on him. And that's not good. Like a good running back, Charles Haley. Just kind of gave him a hip, took it away. Makes a sack. Third and 19. 55 to go. That was just furious pressure from Leon Lett and friends. You're right, and it was friends. First, you take care of Charles Haley. This time, they double team him with Stucy in the back. Tony Tolbert is going to raise some havoc first, and then he gets some help from Leon Lett. There's Tolbert. Lett finishes him off. But it started because of the concern with Haley, one-on-one -on, -one on Tolbert, one-on-one -on, -one on Lett. The result, a sack. And nothing out of the turnover created on the missed snap. Here's Saxon. That's another returnable punt. Kevin Williams at the 21. He's knocked out of bounds at the 25-yard line by Robert Griffin, number 24. Looking uh, for a block on the back. I thought it was it was uh, maybe Anthony Fielding's number 54 for Dallas. Right there. Yeah, that's yeah, that that is a block in the back. It should have been a penalty against Fielding's. Time has been called. What you see here is a busy business traveler getting a new telephone. That's because he's staying at Courtyard by Marriott. Apply for a new AT&T True Choice calling card, you'll be sent an AT&T Design Line phone. So when you stay at Courtyard, you'll not only leave refreshed for the next business day, you'll have a handy new device for making future reservations, too. For details or reservations, call Courtyard at 800-321-2211. When I got rid of my gray hair, I wanted a natural look, so I didn't take any chances. I use the sure thing for a natural look called Just for Men. Apply Just for Men and in five minutes, rinse. It's specially timed to blend away gray. Bring back your natural look and condition hair. It's a sure thing. Just for Men, the sure thing for a natural look. And now try Just for Men color gel for the hard to color hair of mustaches and beards. Brush in, rinse out, just five minutes. Got a car, but need an engine? Then come to Pep Boys, where you'll find a huge selection of over 1,200 quality engines for your car or light truck for as low as $699.99. Import or domestic, all have a 12-month unlimited mileage warranty. And you can charge it with your Pep Boys credit card and pay as little as $35 a month. So come to Pep Boys and drive away happy. 35 remaining in regulation play. The Minnesota Vikings and Warren Moon find themselves trailing by a touch. And they've not had much offensive success the last seven times they've had the ball. A lot of, a lot of Mike uh, Saxon. A lot of punts. And a missed quad in phase field goal that ended his streak of 31 in a row. Here's Emmett Smith. Moves it out from the 25-yard line to the 28-yard line. That's his 17th carry. The rushing leader. He was talking with us yesterday. We had an engaging conversation with Emmett because we laid down ground rules. <laughs> no Deion Sanders, no discussion of the hamstring, and no mention of November 12th well, when they play the 49ers. Exactly he said, right. folks, I got an hour. <laughs> <laughs> He's coming. Yeah. He is coming.
you know you're a good football team when you can run the ball when the defense expects it. And, and the Cowboys have been able to do that. They won two of their games last year in the fourth quarter. We talked about them being a good fourth quarter team and the best fourth quarter runners right there. Actually, they won three in the fourth quarter last year. There's What's Ernie some, doing? There's some concern there. He's nervous. I think that may be a cigarette. Might be a free one. Now it's a stub. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're going to get Larry Allen, I think. Full start prior to the snap by the offense, number 73. Five yard penalty it remains third down. Yeah, you, you, you're going to see. Yeah. What happens, you, you want to point first in this thing. When this happens, you got to start point first. Barker got the first point in, and the hangdog look there of Larry Allen. When you got that hangdog look, you know you're guilty, you know? Larry Allen from Sonoma State developed a hangdog look out there. <laughs> Third and nine. 410 to go, regulation. It's coming into the flat for Emmett Smith. Dwayne Washington, it'll be fourth down. The Vikings will get it back. Well, we're going to have a pretty good finish to this thing. Again, a good, uh, a good pass rush, good coverage, because it was third and long, and it for forced Aikman, they forced Aikman, to dump the ball off to Emmett Smith. And that's as good as Emmett is, that's what you want to have happen on third and very long, a pass in the flat. David Palmer back to return the John Jet punt. Three and a half and the clock running. 17-10. They're going to get good field position. They sure should. Dale Hellestray snaps it back. Nice and high. Fair catch call by Palmer. Grabs it at the 44-yard line. So the Minnesota Vikings have three minutes and 14 seconds left, and they find themselves 56 yards away from tying this one up or going in front. Well, we called it a measuring stick game for the Vikings, and you have an experienced quarterback in Warren Moon who's, who's done this before, and if you don't think Warren Moon is a good player, look at the collapse of the Oilers last year after he left. I mean, it kind of proves the, how, he, how long he carried that team. But right now, second year with a new team, 314 left. You've got to get the ball in the end zone. You've got to stick it in the end zone. 46! 46! From the 44, first and 10. Amp Lee is in the backfield. He is the pass receiving specialist. Reed and knocked it away. And they had three guys on Charles Haley that time, including Chris Carter. I mean, they had Stussy, they had Carter Watch, and then they had a tight end. And he still gets through them. I mean, that is one determined pass rush. And Tony Tolbert was also in the vicinity. Yeah. Number 92, second down and 10. Maryland. Coming up next, the Steel Post Game Report. We'll have scores and highlights from all the third week action around the National Football League. Ben Cellini and Mark May have the stories covered, and Ernie Johnson is with us. He'll have tonight's stars from Minneapolis. And with 240 remaining in the ball game, I think the Vikings have to think about hey, they have two downs to pick up this 10 yards. You don't necessarily need to get it off right here. Good game. His sixth catch of the afternoon or evening for Reed. 87 yards. He's caught a touchdown. And that was a perfect read and throw by Moon. That's R-E-A-D, not R-E-E-D. I caught like, you. Yeah. 
That's good offense. <laughs> O-F-F-E-N-S-E. -E. <laughs> Time has been called. D-I-M-E. <laughs> Rarely does someone go where no one has gone before. Rarely does someone accomplish what has never been accomplished before. Rarely does an automotive system achieve a combination of advantages never achieved before. But when it does, the world tries to follow. The North Star system by Cadillac. Creating a higher standard. A bowling ball, a pineapple, a birthday cake, a Nokia cellular phone. One of these objects would make it easier for me to juggle my schedule. He's a juggler. You're not. Pick up a Nokia cellular phone to help you juggle your schedule. Nokia, largest European cellular phone manufacturer, now in America. No matter where I park, it draws a crowd. It's a 55! It's a 55! 55. 55? This is one of the last real classics of our time. What do you think of the bumper, huh? Everything's original. And I take care of it myself right down to the oil and the pure later filter. Pure oil now! It's a 55! So when someone asks me how I've kept up the engine, I just show them the pure later. Pure oil later! I don't think it all fit. Legends live! 55! A pure later, pure later. Two minutes remaining in this one. Warren Moon and the Vikings have a first down and 10 at the 34 of Dallas. They used a timeout earlier, so they have two remaining. The Cowboys back home against Arizona next week. The Vikings' tough road continues. They go on to Pittsburgh. They're hoping to go in with a victory, and they need uh, a touchdown. <laughs> now the guy's looking for himself on television. <laughs> and he doesn't realize he's already been on. Palmer is in at wide receiver, wide to the right side. This is Chris Carter in motion. Again, a four-man rush. They go to the left side. They catch Larry Brown. It's interference. No flags. No. Wow. Whoa. And unless Larry Brown had his head turned, it, it looked like interference, but he has his head, head turned, and he called incidental contact. Watch Larry Brown. This, this was a good matchup. Sent a guy in motion. No, that, that's not. That's good defense. Yeah, sure yeah, is. He, Jake, yeah. Jake Reed had a little claw action there. Yeah, he, he got his head turned. Yeah, right yeah. there. There's the claw. Put on the Drew Pearson on him, wasn't he? <laughs> paying him back after 20 years. It's Nate Wright and Drew Pearson. <laughs> 1975. Bring on the leisure suits. <laughs> I noticed. Second and 10. Left side. Caught at the 33. It'll be third down. Dixon Edwards with the tackle. Okay, again, Vern, in that third down situation where, you know, you'd like to get the first down, but you don't have to. You don't have to. Third to about six. But after, if and when they get an next first down, I think they want to take a couple shots at the end zone because it gets very, very difficult to score on the Cowboys inside the 25. 86 seconds to go. Third and six. <laughs> Dandy, beautiful, whatever you want to call it. That, that was absolutely spectacular. Clutch play. Battling the Cowboys. Knowing that Haley's coming in on you. You know Haley's going to get single block. And he finds the big old 6'3", Jake Reed, a perfectly thrown ball in between two defenders, working on Larry Brown as they have the second half. I just don't think they're going to run it in from there, Vern. And now they have three downs left. Uh, I would have much rather see them use a timeout then early before that play and then take four throws in the end zone if necessary. Because their key players are Jake Reed and Chris Carter. It's, it's not that run from that far out. Yeah, they tried a little deception with the draw play on first and ten. Brian Billick 
Chris Carter. See, Carter just said to Billick, I can run a fade. The fade route is when you get bump and run and just kind of run by him, you throw the jump ball. Chris Carter's made a living running the fade <laughs> route. He has. He's about as good at that, or was and has mm -hmm. been, as anybody in the league. Well, you know, it, it's it's he's one of those great loose ball receivers. You know, you throw it up, and he's going to have a pretty good chance of going up and get it. Get it. Now, the Cowboys know that, too. I mean, the Cowboys and Dave Campbell, the defensive coordinator, if you're Dave Campbell, you're going to take Chris Carter away. But you know what? Again, if you're the Dallas Cowboys, the first guy you're looking at is Chris Carter. Force someone else to beat you, although Jake Reed has done it better in the second half. can run a fade and that was a little fade adjustment they got the bump and run the good throw they gave him the chance you give great players a chance at big moments and oftentimes they come through and Chris Carter's been doing that virtually his entire career on Clayton Holmes you see the bump and run so he fakes the fade and then he kind of works his way outside and that's a great catch and a clutch catch and they'll go for one in the tie. Mike Morris is the center. Mike Saxon is the holder. Kawad Reves will try and tie it up. Wow. That was one clutch drop. Great pass. Moon to Reed. Terrific pass. Moon to Carter. Saxon to hold. Mike Morris snaps it. This is for the two. We're notched at 17. There were two overtime games today in the NFL. New Orleans, and Atlanta, and the Raiders, and the Chiefs. And here's the pass. You're right, this was a real good throw. The one to Jake Reed was even better than the play earlier. But that's a heck of a catch. That's not a bad catch at all. Not bad coverage, but sometimes you're just gonna you're just gonna get beaten. And Warren Moon threw it away from the defender, and Chris Carter made an adjustment while the ball was in the air. That's that's fun to watch. That is fun to watch. He, he's kind of a low-key guy, isn't he? Cut from the Philadelphia Eagles, where he played for Buddy Ryan. He told us again yesterday that Buddy Ryan did him a favor. He bears him no ill will. He said he grew up a lot after he was released. He had no place to go. He signed in Minnesota, thought it was going to go well here. They told him it was going to go well. First thing they did is put it behind Anthony Carter. And he was told at one time by a coaching staff that is no longer here, as long as Hassan Jones and Anthony Carter were here, he would not be a starter. And now he is. 122 coach catches last year. And he's got five tonight and the touchdown for the time. And that touchdown, though, that opportunity was set up because of Jake Reed. Right. The big night that Jake Reed has had. And they couldn't double Chris Carter on that play. 30 seconds to go in regulation. Brock Marion, Kevin Williams are deep. Quad Reveas will kick it off. And he launches one. He launches one. <laughs> oh, boy. You know, I was just going to say, because Kevin Williams last year returned two kicks for touchdowns. So the launch was, was needed there. 30 seconds to go. Aikman. Well, they, ha they have three timeouts remaining in 30 seconds. And, and you wonder how Barry Switzer is going to play this. Because Barry Switzer this year is the pitcher of record. Last year he was kind of filling in. But he is the pitcher of record, and it's his decision now. Do you play in the overtime or do you give your experienced players a chance with 30 seconds well, to time out? He said the second year is a lot easier than the first. He's adjusted to his players and made to him. First down and 10. Screen pass. Oh, Emmett Smith is wrapped up and dropped with the 15. Jack Del Rio, the one-time cowboy. 
Now I think they're going to let the time go. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you can fool Jack Del Rio once, and maybe you fool him twice because they did on two screenplays. But then the third one, you don't. And Broderick Thomas, I think, was a part of that as well. We're going to overtime. These two teams came into the NFL. They were awarded the franchises in 1959. The Cowboys played first in 1960. Minnesota started its play in 1961. The first game the Vikings ever played was an exhibition game against the Dallas Cowboys in Sioux City, uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. 4,000 people showed up. Mm. We've got 60,000 on hand tonight. Yeah, they, they've seen a little bit of everything. I mean, they've seen some good defense. They've seen some real good special teams. I mean, some good plays, some, some bad plays. It's been it's been an entertaining night for football fans here in Minneapolis. Jack Del Rio and Billy Bates. And one guy's got blood on his elbow. The other guy's got sweat all over him. And, and uh, even though they're playing indoors, it looks pretty good. They will receive. We're going to commercial, and then we're coming back and going into overtime. 17 all. Lower your right foot and repeat after me. I promise to be free. I promise to be different. I promise to take the other path. I promise to be unique. I promise to drive an Eldorado with a 300 horsepower North Star V8, a suspension that reads faster than Evelyn Wood, and a body that parts traffic. Eldorado with the North Star system by Cadillac. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here to <sighs> Dull. Doesn't have to be. And now the starting lineup. Whoa. That groom from Texas, Billy Clyde Humphrey. And at Pride, a 5'6 debutante from Alabama, Dale Peterson. The Humphrey wedding brought to you by Miller Lite. When you've got the great taste of an ice cold Miller Lite, life is good. The vows are up. I do. I do. And they're good. Whoa, Nelly. That was beautiful, man. How do you know if something is fruit? Well, is it wholesome? Is it natural? What about variety? Is it homegrown? Is it sweet? Is it fresh? Did you wash it? <laughs> then it's fruit. Fruit of the loom, always in season. under glass in downtown Minneapolis, Dallas and Minnesota, 17-17. Two timeouts per team, and the first team to score wins the ball game. This is the third time these two teams have gone into overtime. Dallas won it 16-10 in 1977. The Vikings won it 44-38 in 1988. Now we looked at the touchdown a couple times, to Chris Carter, but here's what set it up. A throw under duress, as good a throw as you can possibly make catch by Jake Reed. Carter came off and said, I can run the fade. I can run the fade. He ran the fade. He scored. Tie ball game. Extra point by Reves with 30 seconds to go. Warren Moon composed. Yeah, really. Michael Irvin composed for Michael. That's <laughs> right. That's the way he always is. <laughs> two teams as we said came in to the league 35 and 36 years ago Dallas leads the overall series 11 to 7 and the Cowboys have only lost in Minnesota twice in all the times they played here now uh, if I'm the Vikings I'm trying to kick the ball away from Kevin Williams don't let Kevin Williams beat you this early in overtime well Juan Reves got the touchback last time out 72 yard kick this is a good one, but it will be returned. Williams at the four. Out to the 26, all in all, pretty good coverage. Yep. And Troy Aikman and Emmett Smith and the Dallas Cowboys come back on the field. Well, we talked about Aikman. He can uh, struggle some as he has tonight. This has not been his best performance, but 
with one play, he can end the game. I mean, he, he has that kind of ability. He's that tough, and he doesn't get discouraged. Eric Williams on the bench with the full cap muscle. Ron Stone at right tackle. The rest of the offensive line remains intact. And Aikman will throw. Deep right side, Michael Irvin. Just like that. Boom. And again, you know, the toughness of Troy Aikman. I mean, he just was under duress again and took a shot. I mean, he is part flannel suit or shirt and part tuxedo. I mean, he can be tough and he can be classy and, and, and play with finesse. And very few guys can do this. I think you've just composed a country western song. Did I? Yeah. Part, part flannel shirt, part tuxedo? Lyle Lovett will put it to music <laughs> next week. <laughs> maybe, maybe. First and ten. Feet of Daryl Johnson. You know, for the Cowboys, they have to be concerned a little bit about their kicker, Chris Bonio. I mean, uh, missed an extra point, missed a, a very short uh, field goal, and now they're in, he may be in a situation to win the football game. He's had one in his career a year ago against Cincinnati. John Baker is the kickoff specialist. Bonio has been suffering from a strained quadricep muscle. I don't know that that affected him tonight, but that's one reason John Baker is still on the roster. Here's second down, Emmett Smith. Gets to the 47-yard line. Ed McDaniel, number 58, with a tackle. It'll be third and a need probably of seven by the time they spot the football. Now, and now here's where the offensive line has to give Troy Aikman some time. Where, where he has been under duress almost this whole game. Barry Switzer said to us yesterday, he's wishing now, he's very close to his eyes, right. he said to us yesterday, if we can protect Aikman, we have a chance with their, on their corners. Fleming and Novacek come near side. It's third and six. Irvin, Williams, right side. Aikman back across the middle. Corey Fleming. Corey Fleming to the 30-yard line. And, and that's a big play for the Cowboys. And, and Corey Fleming's a guy last week against Denver, dropped the Hail Mary pass at the end of the half, and Ernie Zampezi was saying, hey, we need Corey Fleming to play better. Well, here in overtime, he did. But it started with a protection burn. Very good protection there for Aikman. So it's an easy throw there to Fleming. A gain of 17 yards. And now Bonio is going to start facing the sidelines. First and 10, Dallas. 17-17 in overtime. Emmett oh. Smith, watch out. This could be over. It is. Touchdown, Dallas. scamper for the guy that Pat feels is the best running back in the league. What a comeback from a fumble that angered him for much of the night. 150 yards for Emmett Smith for the evening. And he wins it for the Cowboys with a 31-yard run in overtime. And he's the best, the best runner, and he's the best fourth quarter player, too. And now maybe the best overtime player. Watch the left side of the offensive line. And you're going to see a guy that has made one big play after another, even though he struggled. He had three big runs, long runs. You didn't even have to have his belt uh, thing done. Maybe his he, belt thing. The belt thing is his belt or whatever it is. Oh, boy. The fashion police in the league are going to find uh, him oh, for absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. But you know, watch the left side. At least it's not a swoosh. It is. <laughs> Here you go. Two and a sealed off the inside. And Emmett saw it. He felt it. And then he outran Charles Mitchell. It was a close call. Which would come first, the touchdown or the possibility that his pants were going to fall down? <laughs> <laughs> Emmett Smith, 31 yards. <laughs> Toughest tackle provided by Michael Irvin.